Hello guys, what's up? It is Kron in the house here and with me is the one, the only, my boy, p -p 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 Yay! <laughs> hey guys, nice to be here. Um, yeah, I'm so excited to be here today. It's gonna be, you guys know it, the grand final of this tournament is gonna be Jadon versus Dave. And um, I think this is like... This is this is the top of the top. The two best players. You can't you can't say it easily. The two best players are gonna fight it out today. Yeah, honestly, this I'm so pumped for this. This is literally. Uh, I think if a lot of people at the start of this tournament had sat down and picked out their dream grand final, there'd be a few different iterations. But I think this would be the most popular choice because both players obviously excellent in their own rights. But I feel both uh, absolutely have fire in the belly to win this whole tournament and prove that they are the best standard 1v1 player in the world. And I mean, let's just quickly go through it. So Dangerous Dave, AKA the shortened version now, just four letters, he's streamlined, he's faster, it's easy to type his name out, but, and he needs no introduction. Dave has been dominating the Rise of Nations scene since, oh, what, oh, I'm relatively new to the scene. Can, can, since before my time. <laughs> before my time, man. Like, we're going way back into the, uh, the in-clan days. So, you mentioned the word dangerous Dave or Dave, and it just, the words that come to mind is domination, calculated, cool, um, you know, calm under pressure. 
Uh, he's a machine, I'm telling you. He's just a machine. Exactly right. He's, he does not, nothing phases him. He just gets the job done and he always plays at 100% every single game. Most consistent player ever. And also, obviously, one of the smartest guys. And thankfully, he often shares his knowledge with us all um, in videos and commentary as well. So I think, Dave, after what happened in Nomadium, where the, the team EL, who were the, what, the heavy favorites, I think it's fair to say, uh, fell to PLA. And despite Dave playing some good games there, I think he's definitely had a chip on his shoulder and wants to come out strong here. So what do you think, um, Proles? Do you think Jatton's got what it takes to, uh, to, to knock Dave off his horse? Um, if you ask about my opinion, I will give you it. I think Jatton definitely can beat Dave uh, because... I don't know, I feel like Jadon has improved so much as well, like he always was one of the top standard players. But recently, he has been very active, he has been playing like every day, he has been casting matches, he has been, I know he has been making interesting nation-specific plays, like uh, we'll see, maybe he, he, he will use one of them today. And yeah, he knows what he's doing, I think Jadon is confident going into this and in my opinion he can win this if he plays his game and just stays confident to his own skill yeah i i completely agree i've been so impressed um just watching all those casual games that jatton's been playing and i think it's both a strength and a weakness the fact that his gameplay is so public because on one hand in theory anyone can watch him and study his play and try and counter it but on the other hand, I feel like when he plays in front of you know the community, it's almost like that extra bit of uh, fire in his belly to really give it his best. And I think that's what we're going to see in this grand final. I mean, no one, uh, no one loves Ron, I dare say, as much as both Dave and Jatton. So they're both going to give this their all. Um, so that's why we're all in for a treat here. Make sure you let us know in the chat, um, hashtag Team Dave or Team Jatton. Let's, uh, let's, let's see what the... Uh... The public is. I feel like um, Jatton's got the media edge here because ultimately he's the founder of this channel. So uh, it might be a bit of a home advantage for him in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure there'll be plenty of purists out there that have been cheering on Dave as well. And um, and I guess any um, anything that we should expect <laughs> as far as game styles here from what you've seen in the tournament so far, like um, what should we be looking out for as, as spectators as we watch this first game? Um, good question i think the uh, thing is dave is uh, a very rational player um i mean first of all you will have to look out for the ruins they will be important whether one one of them has more ruins whether the ruins are equal we will have to look out for the rares and also we will have to look out for the nation picks because you know in a way it's a it's a sort of mind game you, you try to predict your enemy's nation pick i find like or, or like you know and then maybe your nation is a counter for the enemy's nation and stuff like that but overall yeah we'll have to look out for this and yeah back to dave he's a very rational player if he has an advantage he will really play into his own advantage and build it up even more uh so for Jatin, I, I guess it's the same, but I think Jatin, he has aggressive styles and he has defensive styles. So we'll just have to watch and see what happens there. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a clash of different styles. I think Jatin's um, trademark despot rating while trying to get to gunpowder is probably going to show its, uh, show its head a few times here. Uh, let's just quickly have a look at the bracket and just recap, I guess, the pathways that these players came from. Uh, given yep. this is the grand finals, they've they've come through some heavy um, heavy opposition here. So if you look at the top bracket, we can see Jatton started out with a 3-0 against Boo. Um, definitely uh, that was one that could have gone either way, but it was, Jatton won them quite convincingly. Then defeated Surge 3-1 in the quarterfinals, and Meliodas was a, uh, I believe it was a 3-1, three, three one, I three, think. 3-1 as well. So Yes, yes. So, so lost, um, only lost the two games on, on the way in this section of the tournament, one to Surge and one to Meliodas, but uh, yeah, still still a very dominant performance overall. And I think I think he even picked a few nations in there, which uh, you could argue were a bit experimental. So, uh, you yeah. know, if he was really trying to get a clean sweep, uh, he could have probably picked some uh, potentially stronger nations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, if we look at the other side of the bracket, so Dave, again, he had no easy task either. Although I must, I must admit, 
Oh, actually, no, it's it's pretty similar. So he had hockey star in the quarterfinals, a uh, very experienced player. But um, yeah, let's, let's be honest, Dave is that tier above and that's no disrespect to hockey. And then mm-hmm. in, in the semifinals, uh, sorry, the quarterfinals, it was quite a, an interesting one, um, Naoto versus Dave. I think that was one that we all really enjoyed. And, um, you know, that that's like old school versus super old school, if, if that can be yeah. said. If that can mm-hmm. be said. You're correct. <laughs> because, yeah, Naoto is, uh, from, uh, from what I've heard, you know, he was a legend back in the day. Uh, oh, my, my webcam has just dropped out on me, so you guys will see uh, my frozen face. Let's hope it froze at a good time. <laughs> I'll, see if, I'll see if I can get that fixed, but in the meantime, uh, I'll, I'll keep on, we'll keep on talking. And then, um, and then finally in the semifinals, so that was the, the match versus Momo. Um, what, what was your thoughts about that game? Um, obviously, you, you cast it. I was, so. uh, yeah, I was, I was kind of disappointed just because I felt like Momo could have done more. And also, I, I somewhere in my heart, I believed he he can win. Um, you know, he's my teammate and stuff. So obviously, I was I was cheering for him. But yeah, like I said, in that game, the ruin, the ruin advantage that Dave had, he perfectly played his ruin advantage. When he had the ruin advantage, he just kept raiding and kept pressuring Momo to the point that Momo didn't know what to do anymore. So let's see if he can, if he can do something similar similar against a player like Jaden. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I just realized, yeah, unfortunately, technical issue there. My uh, my video's uh, frozen and now it's disappeared. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to do. I think the only way around this is to temporarily restart the stream. But I don't know if that's uh, worth the risk. So let's yeah, just, I don't know either. Let's just uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just go straight into the game, guys. And apologies. Do you want your? Yeah. Are you are you comfortable still being on stream or? Without. Yeah, yeah, all good, bro. No, no, all good. Let's let's get this thing yep. rolling. Let's get straight into game one. All righty. Uh, let's load it up. So I'll just switching across now, but guys, make sure you let us know what you think during the game in the chat. We'll try and keep this as interactive as possible. I want to see plenty of fanboys out there. And um, all right, I'm loading up the first game now. So uh, you ready, bro? Are we, we going to jump in? Um, yeah, let's jump in, bro. All right, let's do it. All right, guys. Three, two... One, and start. All right, guys, here we go. Game number one of the ELO Legends Grand Final Best of Nine between Dave versus Jatton here. And the first things that we can see here, obviously the map is Sahara because that is the tournament. But we have L. Dave has picked Greeks, while Jatton has picked Romans here. That is going to be a fascinating matchup, I feel. And um, you can already see that Dave is scouting with a lot of citizens here. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven citizens out on the map. But um, what do you think of this matchup, bro? Is Greeks versus the uh, the Romans here? I think I think Greeks versus Romans is fair enough. Uh, I remember Jaden himself said that Romans have a pretty big um, advantage here. I mean, they do have more practical advantages or bonuses as a nation it's that you know that fort is cheaper uh cheaper heavy infantry uh you have a wealth advantage because your cities gather wealth from the start of the game um yeah that's more practical for greeks i mean if they have a couple knowledge rares they they don't really need to focus on their knowledge game anymore they have enough to get to medieval or even to gunpowder um, so it's, it's just about how you play your cards right. So you have bonuses, you have advantages. How do you use them? Yeah, I think so too. And well, first of all, we can already see that Jatton has gone for mill one here, a very aggressive build, and he is sending out a hoplite. This city only has one citizen building it. So potentially if Jatton can move his men fast enough to the location of that city and deny it, this may already be a massive first strike here for Jatton. It's actually possible. It's going to be close, but it's possible that it could catch that city. It's at 70% now. Ooh, yeah. And you can see that it looks like he's walking the long way around here. So that's very unfortunate for Jatton. If he had walked, uh, you know, if he had been able to see the map properly and, and walk directly towards that city, he probably would have got there in time. But at this point, at 85% built, it looks like the city is going to go up. And that is a huge let off there for Dave. 
I'm not gonna lie, I've never seen uh, Jaden use uh, Romans like this, going mill one like that. Uh, two hoplites is quite a heavy investment, so he better he better make it worth it. So far, he I don't think he found any ruins with those hoplites, or he hasn't done any damage yet. So so far, I'd say this is not the greatest um, action here for Jaden. Yeah, it's a huge investment, like you said, and at the end of the day. Um, it's going to be really difficult for him to actually do any real economic damage. Um, he can be annoying and keep these citizens idle and garrisoned, but he, he is going to have to probably force a barracks too. But the thing is, if Dave plays this smartly and doesn't panic, he can just simply run his citizens away um, as needed and just continue cutting wood for the yeah, remainder. Just, just circle around, keep that hoplite busy. And meanwhile, Dave completed the barracks, making an archer, so he will be in a safe spot very soon. By the way, by the way what time point are you at? Because the screen share doesn't work for some reason, so I don't want to be out of sync. Oh, no problem. Um, actually, let's just quickly... Do you want me to quickly pause for a sec? I'll just see if... Uh... Oh, okay, Like, yeah. I see your game curses, cursor in game, so there's something weird going on. Like, I see the Rise of Nations cursor, but, uh, but the screen is black. Oh, okay, so yeah. It's, it's... I might just quickly pause, guys, one second. Um, we'll just yeah, pause just it. pause for a sec. So I'm just at yeah, the, sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm just at the 320 um, uh, second mark, and I'll just quickly change some of the settings, just so yeah. that um, hopefully that'll fix it up. One second. Uh, window. Okay. Can you um, can you see? Oh that? yeah. See that? Okay. I now? can see this. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I'll even move your video over to the side. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay. All right, let's um, let's keep going again. So um, yeah, three minutes yep, twenty and three, two, one. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, so I think I think Dave will be fine now with that archer that's uh, coming up. Um, he has two cities already and stuff. His eco is slightly better, I guess, than Jadon's. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I think, um, surprisingly, Jadon's actually not doing too bad. He's definitely making the most of what he can do. But, I mean, now that this archer, like you said, this bowman has come around here and he wisely runs away. I don't know if those hoplites are going to survive, but the top one should be able to get away. So at least he won't lose them for nothing. He might actually save both of them, which is uh, very nice. Also, uh, let's uh, you know talk about the uh, rares real quick, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the big the big thing here is for Jatni he has salt there, and it's on his capital, so it's safely in his possession. And the Romans, which already have cheaper infantry, um, you know, having salt, and if he goes despot, potentially, he can just spam a small army in H2 and just harass Dave. And given that Greeks isn't uh, a fast nation at all, harassing them would be a very nice idea. Yeah, I think having salt is huge. And look at this from Jatin. He just killed a citizen and then somehow got this hoplite away. He's literally got <laughs> one leg left. Um, he is. That's some nice micro, man. Massively wounded, so yeah, some really nice micro there by Jatton, making the most of it. And he still has this hoplite at the top here as well. And I don't he know. He if... did try to uh, raid that merchant, but they've saved it. Yeah, nice save. Um... Looks like he should be able to get away with that barely um, as well. Whether he can get them home safely, though, is another question. And both players aging now, so Dave has just aged up slightly ahead of Jatton, but Jatton's hot on his trail. Probably about, yeah, 10 seconds behind. Also regarding the ruins, uh, Dave has a slight lead here, nothing too bad. It's uh, 500 to 350, so, you know, it's it's workable. I wouldn't say it's, uh, and I think it's this, a big problem there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think Dave's got that slight edge, but not um, anything that's going to decide the game. Look at Looking at yeah, this, yeah. this stable going up here from Dave, so I think... The mill two coming out, I guess as expected somewhat, but the fact that Dave has both silver and amber, he's got plenty of wealth income coming in, he's got his mine up, and I'm expecting some serious companions to come out. Right on cue, there's a companion queuing out here, and 
Jatton's going to have his work cut out for him if he doesn't have a plan in place to, to try and save this. Yeah, man, definitely. And that's the crazy thing. Like, Greeks, if they have wealth, I mean, they can be pretty dangerous. Uh, I mean, any nation, obviously, but he has three wealth rares that he's using right now. And... Oh... If he can deny that tower, it would be very nice. Yeah, absolutely. You can see, it looks like he will, um, unless he doesn't target fire the tower itself. Ooh, he's just getting close. 91%, 95 Jatton, nice micro there, moving the citizen back to try and get that tower up. He does get it up. Oh, and Garrison's both citizens too. Excellent micro there by Jatton to actually make the best of what was a bad situation. Uh, you can see that Dave's still in a dominant position as far as... Oh, and he's going for the city right in front of it too. Do you think... Yep, yep. Do you think this is a, a, a savable position? That's my question. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Jatton does this a lot actually. Uh, that tower is was... The tower was just to, you know, support that city getting built. Yeah. But the problem is, Dave is really doubling down on, on the archers and the companions. So it will not be easy uh, to complete that city at all. He will try, of course. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I'll say that's in his favor is without siege, it's so hard to deny a city and actually kill it off. So by building that city, even if it takes him five minutes to actually get it up, you know, he's basically um, sanctioned off this entire area. Oh, it does cancel though just then. So he, he gives up. I think he's uh, thinking that he just needs to get his third city down quickly because, yeah, the longer he waits. And you know what this means? That, that, that means the silver is now firmly in Dave's possession. Yeah. Very nice catch there. Yeah, very now, nice. I wonder, I wonder what the government will be for Chad, and that's going to be, I assume, a despot, but we'll never know. Yeah, I, I feel like, I know Jatton said to me personally that he loves despot as Romans and feels like it's the, it's always the superior choice, but at the same time, you have to play to your situation here, and I feel like, you know, Dave, he pursued that, that position well, and, you know, denying that city... It's not a huge deal, but it still definitely helps. I feel like Dave's got a bit more momentum at this point. By the way, look at the amount of units Dave has on that third city. It's like uh, five <laughs> archers, three companions. That's quite a sizable army given the time points. Yeah, I mean, if you compare it, like, it's fair to probably compare both. And Jatton's got two archers garrisoned in his, uh, his second city, but he's only got how many units? Three units in total versus eight units that's um yeah obviously only going to get worse and worse as this game gets on so um Jatton may need to try and time out a nice timing attack here possibly at age three with mill three because yeah if, if you look at if you look at the the sorry for interrupting if you look at the position i think dave is doing really good here he has come three he has i mean come two he has civics two Three caravans gonna be running. Um, his eco as well. Meanwhile, Jatton, you know, still has only two caravans, still 100 eco cap. So he has to pressure somehow. But look at how, how much units Dave has. It's gonna be hard to pressure him. <laughs> I think I think Dave is anticipating like the Roman, the Roman uh, despot with salt play. So that's why he has so many units. He wants to stop it before it happens even. Yeah, one thing that Dave's in a bit of trouble for, actually, I just realized, smart city placement there by Jatton, because Dave's wood is seriously low. He's only got seven wood choppers, and yet somehow his wood income is 120. So that's all his cities and, uh, I guess, amber and silk are both helping. But, I mean, he doesn't really have a massive forest at the moment. Oh, look at this, too. I don't know how Jatton got word of that, but he's running away with an ambush there. I don't know if that was preemptive, but... Nice move anyway, he would have lost a lot of citizens there had he not taken evasive action. Yep, he saw it coming. Ooh, look at that though, that despot is running away. Got to be careful not to get stuck. We've all talked about how Patriots are the worst units when it comes to pathing. Man, and also th those companions now, they, they can just circle around, kill archers, circle around, avoid hoplites. Go for the caravan. Oh man! This circle is... around, disappear again. You know. Yeah. And those companions—they're just a nightmare to deal with. Oh, 
Absolutely. Jadon is even forced to use some of his militia, which is not a good idea. That just means he's getting desperate here. Yeah, this is um, really not looking good. You can see though that the... Um, I just had the wrong overlay on, by the way, in case anyone was watching. Apologies for that. But yeah, look at these... Look at these companions, man. They are a man's best friend if you're a, a Dave fan right now because... <laughs> look at these guys. They're like... It's like playing Mongols. There's so many of them. And they're just like probably twice the strength of any other cavalry. So yeah, this is um, this is really a horrible, horrible position to be in if you're Jatin. Yeah, uh, if I was Jatin, I would I would put a tower on that metal mine ASAP because that that would that would actually block most of the raids coming in and going further into his territory. Um, yeah, and you can see royal I, I, royal companions researching now too. So these guys are only going to get beefier. Yeah. <laughs> this is looking dangerous. Jatin is not doing too bad in terms of eco. Only thing, you know, his caravans are lacking right now, but that's because of those heavy raids they've just did. Yeah. One um. Th yeah. One thing I will say is that, ironically, even though um, Dave is Greeks, his knowledge income is only twenty-five, while Jatin's got sixty-five. So. He's invested a lot more into, you know, with that gold into his scholars. Uh, perhaps he can catch up and bridge that gap and, you know, at this pace, potentially get the gunpowder age faster. Yeah, but Dave does have a tremendous wealth income, 110. Yeah, just tremendous. And also he's using first in the corner of Jatin in the, the left corner there. I've seen Dave do funky stuff like that, this tournament, where he just uses rares that, you know, your opponent assumes are not gonna get used. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like next level thinking, but why not? I mean, I'm sure anyone would kill to have furs right now, Jatin included. You see he is building a watchtower here. Obviously he's a little stressed about this uh, increasingly growing army of royal companions. They can pretty much take on hoplites right now, or well and truly. Ooh, this caravan also going down as well. Nice raid there by Dave. Ooh, another one too. Oh, this is really... Wow, weird. no. Don't tell me he's going to get the second one. No. Luckily not for Ju Jatin. Yeah, just garrisons it in time, but that was a close call. Nice micro by Jatin to save it. And this is pretty cool again. Dave is already pressuring, already sieging down that tower. And again, he's just pressuring. He's not giving Jatin any time to relax. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, have we seen Jatin even do a single raid this game? And that's no... Um, he wasn't able to. He's not able to, exactly. Dave's just been, from the get-go, so aggressive. He hasn't had a chance to do anything except try and hold his own territory here. You see that tower has finally gone up near the mine. But I think that metal income's been severely hit. And for Jatin here, he wishes, um, yeah, probably that he had a bit more metal so he'd get that mill three and, you know, make the most of the Roman advantage here. But... Yeah. I mean, it's actually Dave who just got mill three himself and no castle that I can see, but surely uh, he's probably keeping one thought of getting that castle up soon as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, Dave is mill three, wow. Don't actually... Well, yeah, he has he has first, so I, I'm not surprised. Yeah, um, true. Yeah, I mean, cheaper units, I guess, and also... Um, getting that tech for oh, more population as well. He probably just wants to spam a massive army and going for the kill. I suspect. I think I think Dave Dave is going for the kill and he he probably will kill. I'm not gonna lie. He has a massive massive army. He has those you know tremendous royal companions now. And Jaden, uh, yeah, he's spamming army, but he has mainly archers archers right now, and those are quite weak against those royal companions. Yeah, uh, nice raid here by Dave too. He's got three of these royal companions raiding the wood line and even with that tower there, it's still gonna force them to be garrisoned. No. I see uh, Jatin uh, in, in the chat. He's about to question Dave about whether he missed any horse rare. I guess Jatin is surprised at the amount of horses Dave has. Yeah. 
oh, there's something bugged about my game. The chat's not showing, but after this, oh, after yeah. this replay is done, I'll um, I'll just restart my run. But yeah, I, I heard the chat, <laughs> so we couldn't see it. You have to be the yeah. uh, the narrator, like David Attenborough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Here that's we go. the. This is it. Kill here. Force march goes down. He's moving in. Ooh, decent defending army, but definitely a much smaller army from Jatton here. And no mil three. So I mean, Jatton doesn't have mil three either, though. So it's even on the armor fronts. You can see some. Uh... Oh, look at this. Oh, the militia coming as well. Dave is not leaving this chance. He knows that he just takes the city. It's GG. He's brought all his militia from the front city wow. as well. Even his militia? Okay. That is a powerful move. That is a Mark Rutte move right there. The Prime Minister of the Netherlands is <laughs> showing some strength right here. Look at that. He is just going for it. And I think Jatten knows that this is GG. Call the GG there. Ooh, wowie. Wowie, wowie, wowie. Oh, man. Um, I don't know what to say, man. This, this was just great, great, great game by Dave, and I thought, I thought Jaden having salt, he, he should have I, I done more. But I think maybe that two hoplite start. I think it's, you know, not that that's the fault why Jaden lost, you know. But I think it kind of got him out of his groove somehow. Maybe he's, he wasn't used too much to that. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm speculating too much. But yeah, yeah, no, I think that's. I think it kind of slowed him down, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It was it's hard to tell. It was a big investment, and I feel like, I mean, we wouldn't be talking about the same, uh, same game if he had hit that first city that Dave was building. He was only building it, remember, with only one, uh, yeah. citizen, and so he I, was I, clearly I not not anticipating it. I don't think. I think um, if he'd known that he was going to go mill one, he probably would have built it with at least two. But I yeah. definitely remember uh, if, if that hoplite went, that first hoplite went from the right side of the trees, he would have definitely caught that um, city there. Uh, he just missed it by chance. Yep. No, that was um, overall though. Um, GG. That's sometimes the way these things happen. And um, I will just quickly, uh, let's switch scenes. So um, we'll go back to... Um, I'll just quickly restart my resonations because I think the uh, there was some kind of bug that was happening for a second then. But yeah, we will go round two. I'll just quickly update the scoreboard too. Um, did you want to uh, do any singing um, to uh, entertain the masses while we wait? <laughs> you cheeky bastard. <laughs> All right, we'll update the score. Um, and then let's jump straight back into it. Okay. Dave has definitely come to play though. That's one thing I can say without any doubt. That was, and that was some epic micro tail. I love that first melee we saw. Okay. All right, I'm in the second rep. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. One second. Alrighty, let's do this. Three, two, one, let's go. All right. Yeah, let's go. The second game here, epic series, best of nine between Dave and Jatton. Let's have a quick look at what nations they've picked. We have in the red corner at the bottom left, Jatton has gone with Inca. Wow. And that's a... That's and... Who have we got in the top? We have... Dave has picked Chan Chan. That would be Inca as well. I was like, what? What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for it. It's going to be, let's say it like that. It's going to be Cusco versus Chan Chan. We have a civil war going on here. I don't know. I think I think uh, Dave is the one that's rebelling against Cusco because Cusco is the main capital. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is like the rebels versus like the original bloody, the, king, yeah. the kingdom. So uh, this is going to be epic. Jeez, a mirror matchup. Um, you know what I love about mirror matchups is that you can't say there's any nation imbalance <laughs> for obvious reasons. It's just brother versus brother. Let's see who has the most uh, mountains, I Yo. guess. Yeah. 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 So we got, um, so Dave's got, Dave's got two. So that's going to help um, within fairly easy reach. Jatton also has two. So um, I can't see any uh, obvious imbalance here so far. It seems pretty, pretty even. I'm not going to lie. Overall, I think overall Dave has a slightly more wealth potential because that, that plus eight on his cap is, is really nice 
and he has a, a small mountain to the to the left of that one nearby the relics uh, and actually he has crazy good rares this is uh, I want to scream unfair because yeah. if he can use Pappy diamonds and relics that's just uh, crazy and horses in the right corner if he can control that on top of that of course it won't be that easy um, it will be just sick but uh, look at mm. what Jaden did Yeah, he's gone for mill. Um, what's going not, on here? Not only mill, he, 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 he went straight to uh, H2. So uh, he's yeah. getting the wealth income already. Yeah, that's um, interesting. Okay, I wonder if he's planned for this potential scenario of Inca it, versus Inca. It, yeah, well, I think he would have done this regardless. It's kind of like a, like a special play. Uh, he probably will go mill two right now and start raiding with cataphract super early. And I mean, he the the ruins are similar, 500 for Jat and 400 for Dave. So it's not like Jat is super slow here. He probably can afford this trick. Yeah, and you can see that Jatin is building his stable right now. I wonder if uh, I'm assuming mill two will be coming up soon and that heavy cavalry spam will shortly ensue thereafter while um yeah he he's definitely got the, the the massive lead as far as getting those horses out because if you look at that dave is still um waiting to get enough food he hasn't even got close to enough food to age up at the same time Jatin's about to start spamming heavy cav probably non-stop i like this move by jat i think uh this could potentially put dave off his game or it could put him, put Jaden off his game. That's the problem with these, uh, you know, interesting, uh, flashy playstyles. Yeah, it, it can be really cool if it works, but in fact, it can also work against you. And we saw that, I think, in the game of Naoto versus Dave, uh, or whatever. Naoto went for a similar build, and in the end, he just lost. Uh, so hopefully, that won't happen here with uh, Jaden. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I do feel like, yeah, Dave, definitely with, you know, with Pappy, Diamonds, and Relics pretty much in his control, and Horses probably in his control, it's, yeah, it's definitely stacked in uh, in his favor as far as rares go, but at the, at the same time, Jatin's mixing it up. If they would play mirror matchups uh, and same builds, I feel like that would probably be, be really good for Dave, whereas this is a bit of an X factor here. Yeah. The problem is, I bet Dave knows what's going on, so he's already anticipating for it. He got a tower ready. He's, he has some some infantry on his capital city. Um, so it's all about how well Jatin is going to use the raids now. Yeah, you can see Dave still scouting with his explorer as well, trying to see what Jatin's up to. That tower is perfectly placed. Dave is now finally aged and puts down the Senate straight away. I wonder if he will go for a, uh, a Senator there. So yeah, it's all it's all eyes on Jad and how, how well he uses those cataphracts right now. He needs to do some good damage so he can catch up in terms of, you know, his base income in terms of, of food and wood. He might get a Billy snipe, and he actually is denying that, denying that Senate there. That's good. That's real good. Yeah, that, that's definitely going to slow Dave down. And Dave's trying to use archers to take out these cataphracts, but I mean, they're brave archers, and also they take a long time to get anywhere close. Ooh, you will have to be careful there with that horse archer. Continuing the spam too. I think he's. Um, Almost got infinite Q on a lot of cataphracts getting built. He's still building more back at back at base. I'm not gonna lie. So far, this is fairly fairly successful, man. I'm not gonna lie. There's not even any wealth coming in for Dave. So, uh, man, th this was this was worth it, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's basically put everything on hold from his economy just to rush out these units. But so far, they're just running like making absolute havoc. He's still denied that Senate. Um, he's got heavy horses man. here. And, and I mean, the, the genius here is the fact that he's denying his opponent's minds and therefore 
Dave can't build his own cataphracts or spam his own horses. And then how do you counter this many heavy horses? I guess, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I want also to add, like, also the, the great thing is cataphracts, you really need, I mean, I guess you need um, hoplites to counter them, but hoplites would slow you down so much that, I don't know, maybe that's why Dave didn't make, ha hasn't made any hoplites, because hoplites would be too, ex too taxing on his economy. So that's why he's making archers. Yeah, I think so. And I mean, they cost metal too. So he literally hasn't even got a, a mountain up yet. Like he hasn't built a mine. This is six minutes 30 into the game is Inca and he hasn't got a mine up, which is surely got to be concerning. A lot of citizens going down as well. So this is like a, an absolute raiding masterclass here by Jatton. Ooh, he goes to the senator. So I think that's a good choice by Dave. He needs to get that senator to start putting a bit of pressure on those bribes. Yeah. Okay, look, like, okay, like, we can argue Dave survived the first wave. He did suffer a lot of damage. If you look at the game stats and we look at the economy, if you look at the wealth income, Jaden has 600 wealth uh, total versus 100 for Dave so far. So. <laughs> I yeah. bet uh, Jatin has more scholars. Well, he has two as of now, but yeah, he has made a lot of wealth. Yeah, that's it. I mean, he spammed a lot of heavy cabs with that wealth, but also he should have a big advantage, you'd think, in the long term from as far as wealth goes. I'm just trying to look at the knowledge. Yeah. So Dave does have 35 knowledge coming in, um, Jatin with 25 at the moment, but then also map presence too. Ooh, it's gonna be interesting. I don't know. It's it's hard to kind of tell who's come out of this ahead because it looked really bad there for a second for Dave, but now that he's finally stabilized, he hasn't panicked, his food income is still really low, but I mean that won't take too long to get back up again. Yeah. He still has the rare advantage, you can say. Uh he still has Pappy, but he's about to lose the Pappy uh merchant. Anyway. Oh, by the way, uh, Jatin has silver. Almost forgot about that. Yeah, true. That's a good point. And I mean, that's probably helped him with that fast age, amongst other things too. Actually, no, he didn't have commerce before, so he couldn't use it. Yeah, it will help him, you know, for the medieval age though. Uh, what do you think would be the, the should be the course of action for Jatin? I think, you know, he could go either super aggressive or he can just while he's raiding just boom up yeah i think for him um i think he's got to go keep the pressure on uh, i think super aggressive uh, especially if he knows what his opponent's rares are because i feel like booming against you know sai uh, you know from pappy and potentially relics Ooh, speaking of which it looks like jatin's going to use relics so he's taking a chapter out of dave's book from last game oh nice raid still going down as well Yeah, there's a little bit of lag um, on the stream, I think, from... Normally we have 60 FPS, but yeah, there's some some issues with the, uh, the game. But hopefully it's viewable, guys. Just let us know if it's absolutely terrible. And I'll try and fix it up in the next replay. Yep. All right, so Dave now has relics again. Oh, they both have relics, and uh, it's going to be a race to see who can kill the other person's relics first. I think Dave is going to win that race. Yeah, he's probably going to kill that relics. Um, meanwhile, Dave is also planning to use horses. But, you know, Jatin is already in the corner there on horses. Yeah, that, he'll probably meet that cataphract and um, Jatin should get that kill. Ooh, looks like a nice little surge here coming in to uh, take out a few of these units. Trying to get the bribe off, but nice micro there by Jatin. Yo, mentalist, it's fine. 30 FPS is not the end of the world, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it shouldn't be on 30 FPS, but it might be just the way the graphics are set up at the moment. Uh, anyway. 
yeah. Uh, still uh, nice rates from Jet in there. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 the action is, has gone a little bit stale. It's more of like you know, both players are trying to get their economy up, try to get trying to get their you know their base structure set. Yeah, I think so. You can see so Dave's clicking up to age three now, and um, Jatin's got enough knowledge to do so, but he doesn't have enough food yet. So I'm guessing that'll be coming fairly soon. Um, and Jatin with a slight take advantage, he has Civic 2 up. And obviously his third city as well. Yeah, he's doing he's doing better overall. Overall, he has he has a better economy overall. He has a slightly, you know, the, the knowledge income is similar, but yeah, he's going to be aging as well very soon, so Yeah, 120. I'm trying to think. Yeah, if you were in Dave's position, do you think would you just go for that gunpowder and lightman age boom here? It's hard to tell because it's hard to actually. Um, what's the word? You have to kind of know if you're ahead of your opponent or not. In in, in Dave's case, you know, it's like how do you tell? Am I doing better than Chat in terms of boom right now or worse? The thing is, he has Pappy, so he, he could leverage that, I feel like. He could leverage that to go for gunpowder quickly. Um, but I don't think I don't think Dave is in a, really in a position to attack right now, and he's not going to. Uh, he's probably going to just try to play safe and boom up. Yeah, one thing that's Which really... Shot. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's, he's yeah. got to be careful. He's kind of... Dave's kind of limited by his wood stock at the moment. He's... He's got enough to get by, which is nine spots of wood, but I mean, with Jatin securing the middle, he pretty much can, he's got 19 wood chopper spaces compared to Dave's absolute max of nine. I mean, obviously that, that will scale once he gets his woodcutter camps down, but, ooh, look at this. Really nice raids on all sides here. Massive raids, oh my this God. This looks like, that I was... don't know, this, this is this domination, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that was... That was like watching the night, like the red, Ooh, the red wedding. Look, yeah. Oh. And look, look at that. Also, the the woodcutter scam there. Yeah, very nice. It's, yeah. it's hard to co cover everything. Oh man, that to catch Dave, someone like Dave who was so skilled, like off guard like that. It was like literally uh, two pronged, maybe three pronged attack. That was incredible. And yeah, a lot of citizens going down. Although he did garrison some of them in that tower, so it's not the end of the world for Dave, but. Look at his eco. It is hurting right now. I feel like Dave uh, doesn't really know what to do right now. He, 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 he might want to go on raids of his own, but it's very tough. He, he hasn't really scouted Jatin's um, territory like that. He doesn't really know where the buildings are and stuff. Yeah, man, this... The hardest thing is like trying to meditate and stay calm when everything is just falling apart. And I feel like that's kind of what Dave's being faced at the moment. If he can just somehow yeah, hold on, yeah. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's tricky, it's tricky. Also, if you look check out the library real quick, uh yeah, Jaden is aiming for gunpowder right now. He will be there pretty soon. Uh, while well, Dave, uh, you know, he's he's uh, having trouble. Yeah, I think Dave's, um, yeah, his base incomes, like food and wood, and even his metal income, yeah, just, they've taken massive hits. Just masterclass in raiding here. Still raiding in the middle too. Oh, this is absolutely brutal. And if, uh, if I was Dave, I'd just be so frustrated at this point. You just build like five towers in the perimeter of your entire city and just keep keep the huns out mm -hmm. so to speak yeah by the way yeah yeah um Jadon was trying to place a castle near relics but i don't think that's gonna work out yeah, yeah. it's not gonna work out oh and actually dave built his city up which denied that yeah so but this might be a problem you, you might say this is a nice city because you're getting relics but at the same time there's a caravan route between the two cities that's super exposed. Uh, Jatin can 
just when he hits gunpowder, that's a perfect spot to attack between those two cities. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, this space in the middle is definitely no man's land at the moment. I don't think you want a caravan traveling through there, trying to uh, peacefully trade goods <laughs> between the cities. Yeah, it's not going to happen, that peaceful part. Um, and yeah, um, catapult in the making for Chatton. This is clearly he's aiming for the gunpowder attack. His economy is nearing the 150 uh, li uh, limit, you know, so he's, he's basically set to attack very soon. Nice wealth income, 170 versus 160 for uh, Dave, and that's, you know, Dave has diamonds. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's Dave really is going for uh, Science 3, and uh, but Jatin is already ready for gunpowder if he, if he gets the food. Yeah, I think we're just waiting for him to click up here now. He only needs 100 more food, which he could probably buy if he wanted to, but it would be expensive to do that. But I mean, yeah, getting gunpowder is going to be a massive moment in this game because he's already got at least one uh, catapult ready to convert. He's going around the side here with his despot, going for force march as well. So I'm not sure what his plan is here. I guess he probably thinks that this metal mine is open for raiding, but there's no citizens actually there at the moment. Dave's given up on that mine. <laughs> so yeah. You can't. But, you know, that, that plus eight I talked about earlier, that's, you know, it's, uh, on his capital city, he's helping out. Yeah, that's, that's true. And, I mean, he's much better protected at the top here. So, I mean, this is working out quite well. I'm sure Jadon will be surprised to see an empty mine. Also, uh, a remark, actually, Jadon hasn't gone for a gunpowder yet. He went for his Commerce 3, and he's he's making smelters, he's making uh, all kinds of economy buildings, so he's trying to get his eco up before... Maybe it's even going to be a Enlightenment Age attack, we don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, Commerce 3, um, I guess, yeah, he just wants to get... Because he went Despot, of course, that's a, it's a big uh, bonus to go from 150 to 200. Whereas if he went Republic, it wouldn't have been such a big deal. But I mean, yeah, he must be playing for the long game here, like you said. I mean, it's, um, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not too sure if that was the right decision because look at this. This gave Dave time to actually go on raids of his own and uh, it's annoying Jaden and I don't know. Um, yeah, you know, now both players are, are going to be aging at around the same time. Yeah, you can see this. But Jatin does have a nice equal. Yeah. There's a hero heavy horse archer. Oh, sorry, just a normal horse archer. Trying to defend the, the homeland here. It's actually doing it quite a nice job. <laughs> yeah. It's nice teamwork. Yeah. Between those two yeah. friends. Yeah. Oh, look at that eco of, of Jatin. 200 wood. It's always a nice sign when you see it blinking like that. And yeah, his eco, he's obviously invested a lot in it and now it's starting to pay off. Although Dave does have 220 wealth income coming in. So obviously there's diamonds helping there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I do think that the main advantage right now for Jadon is uh, having two universities full while Dave only has one university full. So yeah, double the knowledge income basically, which will enable him to get to enlightenment faster i do think it's going to be a an enlightenment attack yeah 118 versus eight, uh, 79 for dave so knowledge income and pretty much every income seeming to mostly be on jatin's side at this point uh, army size again fairly even there's a lot of uh heavy archers but i mean i must admit in this inca versus inca matchup heavy archers probably not worth as much as they normally would be. Yeah. I do think overall Chatton should be able to close out this game if he just keeps on the, the course that he has taken. He will probably go enlightenment faster. And yeah, if he plays his cards right, he, he probably will beat, beat Dave. Um, yeah. Um, just because, yeah. Um, he. Yeah, his map positioning, I feel, is superior. 
He's only got to defend one yeah. front. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. Oh, and continuing to raid. Look at this with the uh, monarch at the side. Some nice little uh, carabineers here, or dragoons. Mm, if you look at it, actually, uh, Jaden does has upgraded his bombards, and I think I'm slightly ahead of you. Yeah, but it seems like he's gonna go for mill, mill four. So actually, maybe. Yeah, I'm too soon to speak about this, but yeah. this might be a gunpowder age attack. I mean, I don't blame him. I mean, if if I was in Jaden's shoes here, I'd be thinking, if he can just simply take out that woodcutter camp. And deny that, then I mean, Dave really doesn't have any other wood camp. He'd be that's true. Starve the wood. Just the way this map has blessed him with uh, not many options there. Oh, look at that! Yeah, Jaden's income. His eco is really starting to hum right now. Yeah, Dave's still stuck on that medieval age economy, basically 150 overall. While well, yeah, 200 economy almost for Jaden across the board. Um, yeah, and I mean, fair play to to Jaden. Like he he definitely wasn't given, you know, a very good setup in the beginning of this game with the rares he had. He just I'm not gonna yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Well, I was skeptical when I saw that um, Inca play of of Jaden because it's it's a dangerous play. It either works or you get fucked yourself. <laughs> that's basically the reality, but he did make it work. Yeah, that's it. It's like a and also uh, yeah. having mill four right now. Will in it, yeah, he probably got the operations upgrade he has, so he has a massive advantage in terms of warfare right now. Yeah, his operations just just clicked in then, and uh, he is going in for the charge. Ooh, spies going for some bribes here. It's going to be an interesting one. Spy looks like it will get a bribe here. Ooh, just barely not. I guess the target must have died. Jatton continuing to push here. It's hard to tell who's got the better army. I mean, Dave still has a lot of units as well, so it's quite even at this at this point, but Jatton's armor advantage should continue to give him a slight edge. The Monarch A as well. shitload of archers for Dave. Uh, so that's not really playing into his, you know, advantage. Yeah. Uh, I saw Dave is getting his operations upgrade just now, or yeah, like he will get it very soon. So yeah. But all this time he's fighting without it, but he's doing okay-ish still. I don't know. Uh, Jet just didn't have like that many units, but still, I think he he should win this. Yeah, he's starting to break through that first wall of units and. Once you start seeing these heavy knights taking on the heavy archers, that's that's not it's, good. For, uh, it's done. It, it's yeah. the beginning of the end for, for Dave. But I mean, it really gonna, it's going to come down to this reinforcement. I mean, how many how many stables does he have? He's reinforcing out of three stables and two racks. Meanwhile, Dave's got two stables, two racks. So fairly even on both sides. Dave has that defender's advantage. But I mean, it's starting to look like this is heading towards Jatton's direction. He's He's got plenty of horses there, and they are ripping through Dave's army. And he does have that armor, as we talked about. I mean, let's see if Dave... Dave looks like he's, he should have that. Yeah, he's got his own armor now. So it's it's an even armor footing. But, I mean, look at these heavy horses. They are surrounding this city. And the city does go down. City captured 325 plunder. And Dave calls the GG. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was... A very, very good game, and oh my god, GG. We are squared up at one game apiece. In a way, Jatton did to Dave what Dave did to Momo. Um, he just, uh, you know, he kept raiding. Well, the difference was Jatton didn't really have a, a ruin advantage, but he just kept Dave on the back foot by raiding so heavily. And it, as you saw, that also, like, you know, it made Dave invest into archers a lot early on, and, but later on it actually hurt uh, having so many archers as well. So, yeah, it, it all, you it all, know, it's all connected in the end. Yeah, and I mean, like, if I'm just looking at the resource graph now, you can see that 
Jatton just pushed that advantage, he, that super early age two, and then yeah, the rating mm-hmm. was superb. I mean, fair play to Dave. He he definitely brought it back, and it was he had the rares to to make a comeback. It's just that Jatton didn't let one foot off the pedal. It was just nonstop aggression, aggression, aggression. And um, probably the highlight for me was when that moment where he was attacking on both sides, and it was just like oh. If any other player but Dave probably would have rage quit at that very moment. <laughs> that was beautiful to watch, yeah. Yeah, no, that was amazing. So, all right, guys, that means it is one game apiece. Um, I'm just going to quickly have a uh, two-minute break, so don't go anywhere. I'm just going to be back in two minutes, all right? So stay tuned, guys. guys we are back for game number three dave versus jatton the elo grand finals all right guys let's go three two one let's start let's get it let's get it and we have the nation picks for this third match it's americans for jatton versus the romans for dave mm-hmm. this yeah is gonna ah. be this is going to be interesting. What do you what do you think? Uh, I mean, how do Americans that, play out here? Yeah, yeah, like Americans kind of suck. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> especially against Romans. But this is where I talked about, you know, where we talked about the strengths of each player in the beginning. Chatton has those specific nation plays, which actually end up being very OP in the end because he's just such a good player. So. Um, Maybe I can give you guys like a sneak preview, but I, I suspect Jadon might go for for the Forbidden City at some point. And yeah, yeah. So that's just like a little preview. But overall, like America's is 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 not super super great. 
So especially Romans, they're so they're, Romans is a really dangerous nation with that wealth and those aggressive bonuses. So yeah, um, yeah, I hope it works works out for Jaden his his little play play style thingy. You know what I would like to see though, if um, if this game presents an opportune moment for it, I'd like to see him take a, a leaf from your book, Prolays, and build one of those. Uh, what are they? Red forts right in front of the opponent's army. Oh yeah, <laughs> that would be so funny. Yeah, imagine oh, the, the uh, instant yeah. red red fort. For anyone who's just tuning in and, and doesn't play this game too much, um, Americans can build a wonder instantly. So that's one of their their great bonuses. And red fort is this massive uh, fortress that you can build. So uh, there was a game that Prolaz was playing once where he built it right in front of the opponent's huge army of elephants and. Uh, it, it was really, it was really funny. <laughs> yeah, so uh, obviously he had to fall back and run away from my mighty fort that suddenly appeared. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was uh, it was beautiful. Uh, let's have a quick look at the rares here. So I can see that it looks like Jatin's got a little bit more luck this time um, compared to previous games. Uh, it wasn't too bad with Silver last game, but he's got Sugar well within his reach and uh, horses behind, which should be able to defend fairly well. Um, as opposed to Dave has, uh, he's got wool. Um, what else has he got? Oh, that's a, that's a good one there. Copper. I mean, that's going to help his, <laughs> his factory units stay nice and big, but no, not, not a lot else. And also he has citrus. <laughs> yeah. He has two water rares on the land map. That's uh, <laughs> that's a bummer. <laughs> yeah. That'll keep his ships nice and healthy on this, uh, great Sahara map. Um, and then, yeah, every, all the other rares. We do have relics in quite an interesting position there. Very contestable. Uh, it'll probably come down to who builds their second Civic uh, first to secure that. So, might be. Uh... Man, I, I'm so happy Jaden went for Americans just because, you know, everybody's like sh shocked slightly. But I just want him to make it work. That would be so sick. Um, by the way, if you look at the rares for, yeah, you already talked about sugar. Uh, horses in Jatin's corner is nice. It's actually probably going to be able to use it. And um, marbles on Washington. Uh, usually that that's a sucky rare, but <laughs> we kind of know that Jatin probably he will build a wonder. So in this case, it's kind of uh, he might use it actually. It's actually yeah. It's one of those times where it'll save him, even if he just used it to build a wonder and then just moved off and took some other kind of random uh, rare, it's still worthwhile. You know, 10% is a decent discount, especially on a red fort. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see if that does come out of his bag of tricks. You can see that it looks like Dave is the first one to age here. And that's, I guess, somewhat not unexpected. I mean, Americans are a little bit slow, but I feel like Dave may have had the better, better ruins. Um, yeah, look at that. Ooh, ouch, ouch, ouch. This is not something you wanna you know, you don't want to have less ruins when you're Americans. Yeah. <laughs> because you're already, you know, not, you're already have a sucky nation. So you need a, any edge you, you need. And uh, yeah. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, yeah, Dave might uh, just pressure Jetton hard now. And maybe Jetton won't ever survive. I hope that's not going to be the case. Yeah, I feel like if, uh, if Dave was commentating his own game right now, he'd probably be say, saying something like, well, yeah, we need to. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go move mill three here. <laughs> we, 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 we're gonna rush in age three with, with the armor three. Uh, That's a terrible, yeah, um, terrible Dave impression. Yeah, but. yeah, we need to um, destroy the enemy. <laughs> uh, but, but seriously though, I, I think strategy-wise, I can just tell right now. If I was trying to think, like, what would Dave be thinking? I think he's he's gonna go for some serious despot aggression. I mean, that seems like a classic way to play it. And he'd just be thinking, Americans are so slow. Um, that is why not many people like them in standard because they're just, they're really slow. They're not like Nomad. You know, they're a great nation in Nomad for a reason because Nomad's a team game and your buddies can, uh, you know, help you out, especially in the early game. And then they become super, super strong the longer the game goes on. But in standard, yeah, you don't have any allies to help you out. So this, this could, be, uh, could be messy. Yeah, for sure. Um, you're you're on your own here, and um, I'm worried about Jaden. I think Jaden is worried himself because 
Yeah, I mean, look at look at how much slower he is than Dave. Uh, you know, partly because of that ruin advantage, he's already getting raided. Luckily, it's just you know some light horses. Uh, but that just shows you that he's behind quite a lot in terms of speed. But he he might actually save the the sugar merchant with the senator. So that's that, that's gonna save him. The senator will help him defend against these light horses. Yeah, and his um his scout was also under a bit of pressure there. It looks like he might have gone down, but he managed to get that one away. So that will definitely help him later on in the game once the scouts healed up a bit. Just a bit of a uh, yes, standard light cav skirmish here, and both players still avoiding going mill one. They're going for more conservative builds, I guess you could say. So looks like Dave is going for straight for the com two. He's got that relics as well. So, making the most of it. Some interesting action going on there by the horses. I think uh, Jatin is waiting for the last moment to use his ambush on the horses. So that will actually delay... That would delay him losing horses. But actually, yeah, he's already chipping in with his own light horses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so many light horses. I guess he's... Um, he never actually clicked the ambush button, but... I guess he was yeah, just holding it there. Yeah, ready to yeah. go. Saves his energy and this... Oh, unfortunately, the motion won't heal up though. It's just outside of his territory, but... Uh, but yeah, he still yeah, saved no. it, man. That's um, that's a big deal. Meanwhile, uh, Dave is just happily booming up. He's not going mill 2. He's not going for any classic heavy raids so far. He's using wool and relics. Uh, so he has a nice, nice uh, knowledge income and plus his wealth benefits... He will probably have a uh, nice, uh, nice, you know, age potential and stuff in the long term. He's, he has a better wealth and knowledge income than Jaden, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, has the wood for both teams too. It looks like Dave's going to secure, or he already has basically secured a massive forest here. I feel like the wood gods were slightly kinder to Dave. Um, he's already got a really good wood eco, but enough for both players to make a a good go of this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good point there, uh, Sermon. Um, yeah. Thing is, for Jaden, yeah. Um, it's I, I feel like this was kind of like a confidence thing for Jaden. He was like, fuck it, I, I trust myself, I'll make it work, I don't care. So it's like a mental thing, I guess. If he, if he thought that you know, sometimes you have to let yourself go and play how you want because sometimes you can get stuck in like a mindset of I can't win this. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, it does. And I think you need to stay true to your own play style. That's the number yeah. one thing. Yeah, you yeah. You can't follow yeah, a, exactly. a build order or a manual because, yeah, these things just, you, you sometimes you got to, what's the word? Ad lib it. Just. Just uh, just vibe, <laughs> just play the game. You know you can yeah, play. Yeah, just vibe with it. Yeah. Also, it's like you know you you have to be able to say I'm gonna do my thing and I don't care if I win or lose. Uh, I'll be like you know, uh, it's okay. Yeah. I can live with any outcome, yeah. if only I just played my game. Yeah, exactly. I think it's much easier to live with yourself than if you play uh, you know forced style. Which, yeah. uh, and then you lose, and then you're just even more upset because you didn't stay true to yourself. But that, that being said, um, Dave is doing very well here, and Chadden is in trouble, you might say. Yeah. It's all about the moment I'm waiting for is when Chadden finally gonna place his wonder. I think it's gonna be uh, Forbidden City, but. Um, Forbidden City will give him extra economy and given that the Forbidden City has so much HP It's hard to really capture it really quickly, but now I'm just speculating. I'm just pretty sure he's gonna go for Forbidden <laughs> That's why yeah And where do you think he should place it? I don't know maybe between those two mountains just very aggressively. Yeah They um just the HP alone is oh, and it Yeah, like yeah, yeah Dave, he is pushing in a bit here um, just to potentially raid some caravans, but the caravans happen to be out of position, which is 
a good thing for Dave. They were traveling a different section there. And um, Dave is onto it. He's got a very slow Roman army compared to the, the very mobile army of Jatin, but he will eventually catch up to this, these guys and send yeah. them, shoot them away. By the way, look at this. I think I think we, we see the, the, the picture clearly now. Jatin is aging and he has enough food and wood to place down the Forbidden City. He has a villager ready near the border to place it down. So everybody look at that woman. It's about to yeah. it's about to build something big. She is about all to build. by herself. Yeah, all all by herself. All <laughs> by herself. So here we go. Oh, look at that! Boom! That is there. Eight. We go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Instant economy upgrade. Woohoo! Two hundred economy for Jaden. That is sick, right there. Look at that eco. I mean, <laughs> like, you know. I'm so happy. Yeah, everyone always thinks like you know you want to get your eco to hundred. Uh, to 200 or very close to it and it's always a great feeling in standard or in nomad and yeah look at that 190 ah. 180 he will be able to fill out his eco from there quick smart i'm sure um this feels so good yeah and i mean how many cities he, that was his third city so he's he's actually been delaying his civic 2 he's just got civic 2 now i wonder if he's going to build a fourth city in the corner there or if he just got civic 2 because he needed to get it <laughs> It's part of his part of his tech tree. Yeah. Now basically the only thing he has to work on is his wealth income. By the way, this is crazy. Look at the knowledge income by Jad and I did not expect this at all compared to Whoa. Dave's knowledge income. What the hell? What when, when did he make so <laughs> many so many scholars? Where did that come from? Yeah, I mean I know he gets the free scholar in every city, but that's only three and he's got fourteen, so you know he's built eleven scholars compared to Dave's three. Where did he get his wealth income to build those scholars? I'm starting to worry if, uh, yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> hey, hey, Omega, your accusations are interesting, but actually I just know uh, how Jatin plays. Yeah, we're completely unspoiled, Omega, so don't don't worry. It's just, uh, it was a beautiful prediction there by Prolayers. <laughs> yeah, it's just my skills as a, as a Rise of Nations connoisseur. Yeah. Professional analyst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we can but see. I don't know. Yeah, it, it yeah. looks like um, Dave's gonna pressure this wood line though. He's getting a lookout up, but that's not a tower, so he'd have to evacuate. But at least he saw it coming. Um, now this is this is the only only thing that can go wrong for Jaden right now is if he loses right now to a heavy push. If he survives this, he's good. He's gonna be good if he survives this. Now, yeah. It's gonna be hard against Romans because Romans are the nation that are so good in medieval age attacks. Look at that, military level three for Dave. He has the armor stuff. Yeah. Man, this is this is a quite a hefty task to survive against a despot Roman player with a nice wealth income with the tactics upgrade. Yeah, I mean, look at that. He's already got two racks. He's spamming out of one stable, but more importantly, Ooh. yeah, this this is gonna come down to this city. I mean, despot Romans with unit spam coming left, right, and center. Uh, do you think, do you think Jatin's gonna be able to hold? Man, I'm not gonna lie. I, I wanna say yes, but he he'll have to sweat it out. Oh, look at this. He's going for an ambush here. He's trying to get those two if catapults. He oh. can snipe the catapult. Maybe he can gain just enough time to survive. Ooh, nice, nice. He got one, but that's gonna half the, uh, you know, <laughs> the damage output from these catapults. <laughs> yeah, nice math. One out Quick of two. Math. Yeah, uh, I got I got an A in math, so that's my, that's my Man, specialty. Man, why, well, why wouldn't he build the fort next to Portland? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe but, I'm, I'm missing something. But... Maybe that was before he saw this, um, this, this pressure, but I guess it will help him in this case because it's actually <laughs> getting Dave to turn around there when he otherwise would have sniped that caravan. And uh, Jatin's getting a bit cute here. He's going behind to try and snipe the catapult, I think, or cut off reinforcements, but we'll see if it works. I mean, I don't know what Dave would think. Is yeah, he, he needs more He needs more protection on Portland. He needs units, but I think he's just going straight for the gunpowder. He's just gonna, he's, just, he's like, fuck it. I'm giving up the city. I'm gonna age up and maybe I can survive with my upgraded army. Yeah. Yeah, he is clicking up now. He's clicking up to gunpowder, so... This is and just delay, delay, delay. 
Ooh, it's tricky. He needs to spam some watchtowers here or something. Oh, look at this. He's going for the, the catapult from behind. Oh, come on. Come on. Almost got it. Oh, man. Ah, uh, but he's not going to save the city, man. He's not going to save the city. This is... This is... Man, he should have just spammed archers, I feel like. Why didn't he... Yeah. He went too much for... Fuck the age. Spam archers. Survive right now. Yeah. He doesn't have any army whatsoever. That's a big problem. Yeah. That's it. And I mean, once you get this this many Roman legions, with Force March, he could probably take out any army that Chatton tries to build. So he's got the tech now. He just aged up, but where's the army at? Oh, he does have some slingers ready to upgrade, so... Arcabusi uh, is researching as well. So... You know what? Only one chance is if, you know... Yeah, Dave Dave doesn't have his... Um, oh, no, he, he does have his science level 3 now, and he will be pretty close to the age as well, so the age was not worth it for Jaden at all. Um, because Dave is going to be aging very soon himself. Yeah. In fact, he's, he's aging right now. Um, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> this is... <laughs> is really um, a tricky situation. I mean, if there was any potential benefit for Jatton here, he does have that senator, therefore he's got a bigger eco, which he can fill, compared to Dave, with who's capped at 150. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it won't Luckily, take Dave long, though, to get yeah. to come through. Yeah, I think it's over. It's GG now. It's... Uh... Um, Dave is gonna upgrade his units now, and uh, he's just gonna gonna come back and, and harass Jatton again. But Jatton should not have given up his city that easily. He should have fought for for it. Yeah, and I mean this is gonna be quite interesting now because it looks like Dave has his sights set on this, on capturing this beautiful wonder right here that just instantly appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, man, what's Jatton's metal income is also extremely low. I think he lost that mount. Yeah. So. But, um, he's still, overall, his food income, um, wood income is nice. His wealth income is not super, but the biggest problem is, yeah, he has a small, small army. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah, not good. A lot of. Not good for Jatton anyway, good for Dave. Great for Dave, he is charging in. Yeah, his army is oh, almost three times as big as Jatton's, I'd say. There is no way that he's going to be able to hold this Forbidden City. And I mean, at this point, Dave hasn't even gone for Mill 4 yet. Once he does with that instant armor, it's gonna be all over, baby. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I can only say this was a very entertaining try by Jadon. Um, I yeah. loved, I loved watching this game. Not gonna lie. Yeah. No, it was absolutely a very, um, very nice attempt. And I guess in a best of nine, you do need to use a lot of different nations. You got to remember, there's five nations that were banned which um, everyone can see at the top of the screen. So, how many nations in are there in total? 24, right? I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, 24 less 5 that are banned leaves you 19. You need to pick 9 out of those 19. So, there's always going to be some nations like Americans that you need to uh, add to your arsenal. So, maybe that's Jatton's thought here. Get the uh, per yeah. perceived weaker nations out of the way early on. Mm-hmm. But he still made a good yes, job. Yeah. So. Let's see if he can survive any longer here. The castle uh, is about to go down, so that will seal the deal. And now, yeah, he might uh, capture the Forbidden City himself. Yeah. Yeah, and like uh, Jay Hitch said, um, yeah, Jatton just 
had to make some army in H3, he would have. I think he 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 would have made this setup work if he had a damn army himself. And yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah, you can see Jatin is calling the well played. Got the GG from Dave, and it does look like this is going to be a two one lead to Dave here in this best of nine. GG. GG. <laughs> so, yeah, even though Dave had so many ruins, still Jaden uh, made it made it a very feasible attempt to win this game. Yeah, that that was definitely um, not a good way to start. Like you said, when you're playing as a nation like Americans, you want to hopefully be the one with the uh, ruin bonus advantage, not the guy who's uh, trying to come out of a ruin hole there. So. But no, that was a very good game. Um, all right, guys, let's jump straight into number four very shortly. We'll be back in 60 seconds break. We'll be right back. Alright guys, we are back for game number three. Let's start this replay. Three, two, one. Let's go. This is a best Let's of nine. Go. Best of nine between Jatin and Dave. And we are at two games to one in favor of Dave after what was a pretty wild uh, three games so far. And uh, especially that second game was pretty crazy. But um, Dave was just way too good in the last game and that really got off to a great start with those ruins. Let's keep a close tab of those ruins as this game gets underway. But um, first of all, yeah, the nations. So we've got Jatin with uh, uh, with the Persians here. While we've got, oh, is this a mirror matchup? I believe it is another Persian pick as well. So for the second time in this series, we had Inca versus Inca. We now have Persians versus Persians. What can we expect in this game, bro, Les? Uh, like hell, I know, but I'll try to. Uh... <laughs> well, first of all, it's uh, it's a civil war again, so let's not forget that. It's all, 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 always nice. And again, Jaden is the is a, is you know, I mean, Dave is the rebellion because he's the not main capital of Persia. Anyway, now that we have that out the way. I don't know, Persia is pretty strong in, in, in boom settings, I feel like. The elephants are less strong than Indians elephants because you, you the, to upgrade your elephants, that's very expensive. I don't know, we might actually see a kind of a boom game here. So we'll, we might want to watch out for the rares here. Um, yeah, let's see how this plays out here. 
Yeah, I mean, elephants versus elephants will be interesting. And some players, uh, when they play Persians, they don't like to build elephants before age four until they get those cannons. And then, yeah, once they do get those cannons, though, they can be, they're not only amazing units in their own right, but uh, I've seen Chatton in that last semi final, he was using it to snipe the opponent's monarch as well. So uh, let's keep an eye out if the game does get that far, if we're going to see any similar kind of action. Oh, look at this, though. That is a very aggressive. Civic 2 there by Dave. He is... Oh, and... Uh, Jatton's going for it too, but he's he's way behind. So this is... Um, wow. This is, uh, this is a very cool dynamic. It's like fighting for the third city who, who gets faster yeah. there. But what's the a big problem here is Jatton invested already in that Woodcutter scam, but he's about to lose it. And also, Ooh. you know... Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he will play his. He will have to place his third city somewhere else. Ooh, and he he does place his third city down, but it's gonna be cancelled, is it? Because he can't build it. In I the think it's. Mm, oh fuck, fuck. Yeah, so he has to build it <laughs> just on the edge of his territory now. But I mean, had he seen that coming, he probably could have built it a bit faster. But anyway, that's yeah, not not the worst thing. And it looks like it will be a mirror build here, except Dave does have commerce, while Jatton is just getting it now. So. Yeah, pretty hard. Very interesting dynamics. We don't see mirror matchups all that often, but this is the second oh. one in in the same series, so it's going to be cool. Like whoever whoever wins, of course, the, you can't blame nations. Also, if if you guys want to know what happened here, why is Dave so much faster? I saw he didn't make any extra farms or woodcutters camps while Jatton did, so uh, Dave had more spare resources to go for his civics faster. And so maybe that was maybe that was a slight mistake from Chad and uh, you know over committing to his eco and and then he was too late with the third city. Oh, and look at this! This is really um, uh, I guess unfortunate for Jatton here. And well done by Dave. He's boxed him out as far as zoning goes. I feel like this third city of Jatton before he was in a good position, but now because he's been forced to build his city so far back, he's barely got the front edge of those trees. And he'll be able to get some use of it, but it's it's also in quite a compromising position as well. Oh, and if you look at the wood overall for Jaden, we have a very bad situation. Uh, the only decent patch of wood uh, under Abaddon is not safe. Yeah. And all the other options are less than satisfiable. Yeah. <laughs> There's really not much else <laughs> out there. Uh, I mean, he's only got 30 in his home base, and that's going to be a huge issue for him. And I just don't know if, um, you know, he can build a temple to temporarily try and nab some of these in the middle. But I mean, yeah, once Dave builds his own temple, it's only going to be a temporary arrangement. And you can see that Dave's going for a barracks here. Good choice by Dave. I mean, getting those special uh, Persian heavy infantry, uh, Jatton will need to be able to counter that with his own archers. Yeah, I wouldn't say that Dave was lucky here. He just, he was more decisive. I mean, he knew what he was going for. He knew he wanted to place that third city down. And he knew that he doesn't want to be slower than Jatton. And he he, he accomplished that because, yeah, he, he went for his civics straight. You know, he, he, he yeah, he went for his civics faster. Yeah, like he, he didn't stuff around. He knew what he wanted. He basically had a mission, which was to build this city as quickly as possible. Yeah. And um, yeah, sometimes the eco doesn't matter because if in hindsight, if Chatton thought he built an extra farm or two, yeah, look, look at the position he's in now. He's got basically no safe woodlands whatsoever. And uh, he's also on the back foot now trying to defend these raids. And now also, yeah, I don't know, maybe maybe Chatton should have opted for a different uh, location for his third city because yeah he only got those mountains i guess in babylon but also this caravan route is very exposed now dave can harass this as much as he wants and he will do that probably yeah absolutely he's gonna continually put pressure on there you can see that if cotton in his territory so given he has no wood that's probably the one rare that he wants to see um, yeah, which will definitely help him and you know potentially help him if he did want to get aggressive and I guess you know every player in Rise of Nations you sometimes have those games where you just think oh man I'm, I'm kind of screwed here I just need to, to roll the dice a bit and go for something 
Um, yeah, that's right. It's that's a, correct. It's a good rare to have if you are going to try and do that too, just to uh, spam units. Yep. Yep. Uh, meanwhile, we do see. Uh, by the way, the the ruins are similar. It's 450 to 400 in uh, yeah in favor of Dave, but that that's neglectable. And also, meanwhile, because of the good start, Dave is already able to get a stables going and uh, a sweet, sweet creature. Yeah, this is a very sweet creature. Look at this bad boy right here. He is uh, walking around like he owns the place. And um, yeah, I don't know how Jatin's going to be able to respond to this elephant effectively unless he builds his own, and I don't think he's in a position to do that at this point. No, maybe uh, maybe a senator would help here. In fact, uh, senator is coming up from from Jatin's side. Yeah. For Dave, we'll, we'll still have to see what government he will go for, but usually usually Persia goes well with senator. But he will go for the despot. Yeah, right. Okay, so senator versus despot here. I think, um, yeah, it's interesting to see as their tech choices kind of split out. If we ignore the fact that Dave's got this nice map positioning and arguably better wood, everything else for uh, Jatin should be salvageable. Yeah, just his, I, I feel like his wood is just going to suffocate him. He's, he's unfortunately, he's at the point where he needs to start building wood camps on these two woods just to uh, get that critical mass of what he needs. He yeah. Does, he does have wool though, so that that is helping supplement his wood income. Yeah. Also, a very interesting remark is Dave, you know, obviously as Persia, he already has three cities. He has his commerce level two, so he has three caravans and he's using spice. So his caravans are doing some heavy duty work right now, giving him some, some nice wealth uh, benefits. Yeah, absolutely. 94 wealth. We're only 7 minutes 50 seconds into the game. Meanwhile, Jatin's got just the two caravans, uh, also getting a bit of wealth income from that silver. And uh, Jatin doing a bit of scouting and seeing a huge number of units there. That is four land units alone, plus the elephant just behind. So, um, ooh, they're both actually building, starting to mass some decent armies. I wonder if Jatin mm -hmm. may go for uh, yeah, a bit of an all-in here. You know, the, the death spot, one thing that's going to be annoying is uh, yeah, your units cannot heal while attacking, so Jatin can just heal, heal and harass Dave and, you know, kind of play that game of cat and mouse. Yeah, that's, that's true. I just... Um... I don't mean to keep bringing up this wood, but I'm just thinking if I'm Jatin, like, how can he get his eco up, up to 150 at this point? He needs to secure yeah. this, this bottom wood, maybe. And um, actually, Dave did spot that. Yeah, he did spot that little little woodcutter's uh, ca camp there. Yeah, it's like an enclave down at the bottom of the map. <laughs> yeah. Completely detached, and they will certainly get raided by the looks of it. So yeah, both players aging now, but Dave is definitely in a better position. Uh, very nice wealth income, nice, uh, I mean, knowledge income is the same, but yeah, overall better economy for um, Dave. Some nice raids from both players too. You can see that Dave's now raiding those, that wood camp at the bottom while Jatin's got some good horse archers, keeping Dave nice and busy. Looks like he will get away too. Oh no. Ooh, dodges that arrow. Some very... Oh, good <laughs> Matrix. Yeah, that was Matrix right there. <laughs> the world slowed down for a second then. And there's no attrition, so he should survive. Dave's being very gentle to him. He's not researching attrition, because otherwise that would have taken his last few HP. Mm, it's it's uh, actually interesting to see that. In my opinion, a lot of standard players, they usually don't even think about a medieval age push. Usually it's all about the gunpowder push, but Dave has show, shown us time and time again that um, the medieval attack can be super great if you if you already have some leverage going on. 
and maybe he will go for a medieval attack because he he seemed to be going for you know to start sieging that tower maybe yeah i think dave is probably going to look to press his advantage here and yeah i think he knows that jatin has no wood so he's probably got to feel good about his chances about you know not letting the game go on longer than he needs to you see jatin's gone for civic three here and part of me wonders if that's just this this terrible wood situation he's in he's just trying to expand his borders and secure another you know steady reliable stock of wood yeah yeah probably and he's building it i don't know he's building it down the bottom now so behind um that wood and and in fairness it's probably as good as it gets for him because if he placed it on the other side it would be impossible for him to hold it i feel he just needs a wood income that's just you know he doesn't need a big wood income he just needs enough to at least make archers and stuff because i think uh what jet needs right now is enough archers and you know some he just needs an army because with the senator healing i definitely see him being able to f fuck around with dave because that that despot um does not give him healing yeah yeah look at this though dave is not scared of Jatin at this point he's charging in Rob going down from the senator on that elephant trying to nab it actually they've lost the despot just now but the problem Oof. is Jatin doesn't doesn't really have uh, any units to really oh yeah the micro there is not super from Jatin. yeah very very close oh he's gonna lose his senator too. oh no 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 yeah that's rough that's rough he nearly got the bribe on that elephant too but he just walked outside of the territory and um yeah this is suddenly taking a massive turn for the worse here for Jatin. oh look at that too dave raiding behind in the main city as well with two heavy calves uh, his eco there is shot yeah this is i don't know why i don't know why Jatin wasn't able to just build more archers and have slightly more army than he did I think if he had slightly more, you know, having Senator is so great against Despot. You can just, you can just hurt your enemy's units, fall back a little, heal up, harass again, and he would have had decent chances of survival. Yeah, in my opinion. No, I agree. But. Yeah, I guess I, I do feel like though that that wood um, deficit he's had has kind of been playing a part in here as well. You know, that inability to spam crossbowmen because he's too busy spending it on farms. And he hasn't even completed that city that he was planning to build, that dirt city. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, he calls yeah. GG. And it looks like he will tap out in just a moment as Dave's army is rampaging down across across into that main city he was about to capture it and Jatin knew this so wow gg and well played to dave that does take us to three games in favor of dave to one in favor of Jatin. wow so man in in summary though what what was the highlight of that entire game for you i think yeah, it's got to be that early city from Dave. That was a baller move right there. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, that was that was the turning point of momentum in favor of Dave. From that moment on, he was just yeah. Jatin lost so much by not placing that city first. He lost his woodcutters camp, which is a big hit so early in the game. It's like seventy uh, food, I think. That you lose at start then also yeah he lost his wood his city was in a bad spot after that which you know exposed his caravan so a lot of things happened there yeah that went wrong yep no absolutely that was very well played by um by dave i feel like the wood gods were a little bit um not in favor of jat in this game but had he got that city down as he intended to it wouldn't have been an issue for him so yeah, well played by um, by Dave, and you know really pushed his advantage when he needed to there, um, and some good micro from both both players. So that does mean that we are at a uh, a final score now of of three games to one. So I'll just update the scoreboard, and I guess we better um, talk to our talk to our friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and just check. But um, yeah, so at this point, uh, unless um, if Dave or Jatin are out there uh, watching this right now, if you guys can just quickly let us know um, if there are any more games that you want us to cast right now, or if we will officially end this as part one. Um, that would be great because we can keep going, but I believe some of the games haven't been finished yet. So I know that they played the first four games in one session. So we've now finished that. And yeah. Um, okay. So Jatin's just said he's just they've just been playing this afternoon, um, and they have finished it. So that means that uh, what do you reckon? Do, we... do you think? Do you think uh, we need a break? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's take a short break. Um, so. How about we'll be back in... How long do you reckon we, we should break for? I don't know, like uh, five minutes or, or ten minutes. But yeah, I was just asking maybe uh, you want to cause the second part next week. I'm fine with either way, but... Yeah, um, um, I'm, I'm fine as well, man. Um, what do you prefer? I, I don't mind casting right now, but I also don't mind. Sorry about this, but I don't have a clear opinion on this. Yeah, that's that, uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, well, how I'm about just asking you? Yeah, yeah. How about I'll try and um, I'll see if I can fix up my my run. But yeah, everyone who's watching right now, if you guys can just stay put for the time being, um, we'll just uh, we'll be right back in five minutes, right? So yeah, All yeah, good. yeah. We'll try and we'll try and, back. we'll try and keep it going. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, guys. Well, uh, don't go anywhere. I'll just put it on the be right back screen.
All right, guys, we are back, and uh, apologies, there was a, a massive technical delay there, but there is hopefully one advantage or a disadvantage is that you can see my face again, so <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing, but we did manage to fix that up for you guys. So um, we are here now for the, what game are we up to? The fifth game in this best of nine. Fifth game, yep. So, so we're officially at halfway. So without further ado, let's get started. Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's go. Alrighty, so game number five in this best of best of nine series. Let's have a quick peek at these nations here. On Dave's side, we have Egyptians, Memphis. Well, on hashtag ja civil war. Hashtag civil war indeed. That is the second time, uh, third time, sorry, in this series alone that we have basically another mirror matchup. So. I don't know if this is just rigged or if hopefully they didn't collude and say, hey, I'm, let's just all play mirror matchups. But um, <laughs> that is kind of cool. So we're going to see Egypt versus Egypt. Are we going to see Wonder Wars here or is this going to be more like one of those uh, yeah. chariot yeah. fights? Chariot I really, fight I'm really curious. Like, this is super. Um, yeah, I'm so excited. Um, there is diamonds basically in the middle of the map there. Uh, it will be interesting. It's slightly closer to Jatin's side. Um, salt in in his corner also sugar pretty controllable for him it's not too far off from him um, uh, yeah the bottom corner ruin ru rare is citrus not that important the top rare is spice not bad but very hard to control that rare so might not be worth it um, as of Dave's rares he has a bison up in his capital I think it's uh, I mean that will make his Granary research is very cheap and he will not have any food troubles whatsoever and relics in the right corner Also a nice rare here um, Yeah, I don't know the question is who has the better rares. I don't think anyone Really has a super big advantage. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm generally I think having salt and sugar here for Jaden should yeah, help. Uh, Maybe that gives him a, a very slight edge, but I mean having said that having relics very defendable position there right at the back um, it's going to help the longer this game goes on so uh, i'd say yeah maybe a slight edge in the early game uh yeah probably give, yeah, give Jatton a slight so edge yeah you're, you're right by the way uh do you think uh, dave will skip civics it's possible yeah i mean looks like dave he's going to he's already got a um a big lead in ruins too uh, 500 uh, what's happening here what why how how, how that... yeah look at how much of the map he's scouted too i think dave is just really good and he's he's very aggressive with these early game scouts uh, i think he sends about six to seven um from the start so yeah that's something that not all players do i don't know how many Jatton exactly sends out but i think it will be more close to five or maybe six so yeah, he's just got a really good start, and I wonder how many of these ruins are stuck in this black space for Jatton here, or if it's just Dave's just doing exceptionally well. But yeah, you can see, oh, there's a couple there at the top, which are just in those patches of black for Jat, so he is just missing out, um, which is going to set him back a little bit until he finds yeah. him. I, th I think this is super cool, man. Uh, Dave, Dave is going for a, for a cheeky little mill too action very wow. similar to what Jadon did with Inca but this time Dave's gonna pull it off with um, yeah with uh, Egyptians yeah and I mean the exciting thing about chariots which I've seen is that they're one of the few units that can actually kill a light horse that's chasing them if you micro it correctly because they're so fast yeah. and they fire while they're moving and if and effectively I, I don't know if it's one-on-one -on -one, uh, probably the light horse would win but if it's two-on-one suddenly that balance swings definitely back in the favor of the two chariots. So this is uh, going to be kind of cool to see what happens here. I mean, I feel like Dave has come into this game with a very specific build order in mind, going for that really quick mill and skipping Civic. And whether he's up against, the fact that he's up against Egypt as well, whether that's changed his mind at all, or whether he was just going to do this uh, somewhat regardless of his opponent. It's very interesting. Um, Jadon knows about the stable now, so 
he should be anticipating those raids coming in. He probably should go for a stable of his own ASAP. And yeah, getting the tower there is a nice idea. Yeah, that tower is definitely... Um... Ooh, is he going to get it in time though? It looks like this uh, timing is just going to be a little bit too late. Ooh, look at that. Three hits and that is a confirmed kill right there. First kill of the game. There we go. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, and just one arrow short of getting a second. He does do a drive-by. This is like GTA, but the medieval edition. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, and look at this caravan. That has got a massive target on that caravan's back. He does have to turn around and reset that trade route. So uh, a good move there by Jatton to protect it. But having said that, setting his wealth back quite a bit. Seems like Dave is evolving mid-game. Maybe, maybe we have some anime action because I've never seen Dave use like so this this kind of stuff. Yeah, look at this micro too. Really great micro with the chariots. Ooh, took a bit more damage than he needed to, but it looks like that light camel will need to run away. It's just uh, I find it ironic that light camels are like the perfect counter to chariots and. It's only something you see when you're Egypt versus Egypt. Luckily, I mean, yeah, luckily, still, you, if you mainly have chariots, you don't, you, you just need camels to chase them away at least. So you, you're, you're not likely to lose a lot of economy. Yeah, it's like I don't know how much faster light camels are compared to normal light cavalry, but. They seem like they're just fast enough to to make light work of these chariots. And um, yeah, it's, it's just kind of really fascinating, but kind of bizarre too, to watch this, this mirror matchup. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, you know, we had all this action, but meanwhile, Dave has been, you know, working on his base. He has uh, come to Civics to Mel 2, obviously, as well. And so if you, if you compare that to Jatin's library, yeah, Jatin is just going for his Civics 2 now. But Dave is already, uh, you know, he already has his Civics 2, so he might actually catch that, uh, yeah, that diamonds there. And that's a big, big thing. The center wood and the diamonds, if Jatin will allow him. One villager dead, so that will delay, at least delay. Dave a lot. Actually, maybe, uh, ooh. Maybe actually Jaden will get the diamonds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it does look like that, and Jaden's just got the, uh, the temple completed too. He could even build that city further forward if he wanted to, but yeah, lots of action here with the cavalry going back and forth. That, that was like a Uno card, you know that game? <laughs> yeah. just here, just reversed it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that right was kind of funny. Right back at you when you pick up four, reverse, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's brutal. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, so Jatin's getting his Civic 2. Meanwhile, where's Dave going to place his third city? Yeah, that's the question now. Mm. I feel like uh, he's got the pick of his choices, though. He's got the temple down. So, basically, this middle wood is, is his for the taking. And that's going to be a, yeah one kind of so, small advantage there for Dave as this game goes on. He's pretty much got wood secured, while Jatin will need to fight for you know keeping what he can what he can in the small patches that he does have. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Dave has been using relics all this time, so that's that's quite nice. If you look at the economy, Dave has pretty much double the ruin income. 600 to 350 um, in terms of knowledge they're pretty even but Jatin has invested seven scholars six scholars into his knowledge income while Dave doesn't have any scholars yet but that relics has been helping him out yeah definitely that relics is huge third city now up for Dave he has gone for despot meanwhile Jatin hasn't selected a patriot type just yet so i don't know how do you think what do you think Jatin should go for here 
I mean, hmm. do you fight fire with fire? Or do you go for the Republic? I far I don't I don't know. Um It's hard I can't tell really. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um seems like he will go senator in the end. But um I don't know, I wonder if Jatin is gonna go for the wonders, because I remember in, in, in the casual games when he was playing his Egypt game, he was going for the um for the for for the fort, the red fort. But so far, it seems like Jatin is not going for that play style. <laughs> these um these units look like they're walking in slow motion right now. Um, <laughs> never mind, they've they picked up the pace. I think they were waiting on some uh, unit back behind. But it looks like um, Dave is pushing into Jatin's territory, looking to cause some damage, maybe raid those caravan routes. But oh, and timely tower there from Jatin about to finish. That's definitely going to help. Plus, this Senate will help. With the defense and that's a very sizable army and it's a perfect counter against those light horses there those light horses can do anything against hoplites and cat frags yeah it's a good cleanup crew there plus with that tower you should be able to defend and this has caused some damage but it could have been a lot worse Ooh, it does have to be careful it does get those camels away nice micro Nice micro, yeah. Saves those camels. And actually, I feel like Jad is doing a decent job yeah. with what he has defending this raid. And yeah, Dave is basically just running away now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's kind of boxed in by that tower. That was the perfect defensive tower there. Um, and a tower down at the bottom as well. Getting a and few now punches. those 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 chariots, those glorious chariots are just killing off all the remaining hoplites yeah that's it and i think one thing i remember jatin told me once is that your yeah, chariots are the best units you can get for just chasing down heavy cavalry because you can just continually run them away if yeah you, if you micro them correctly and they can't take a single wow. hit pretty flawless defense from jatin i'm not gonna lie yeah i mean dave does... yeah i think i think it yeah. sorry this has been, I think, more beneficial for Jatin than Dave. <laughs> yeah. He, he, ha he, has <laughs> he has lost so much. It's crazy. Yeah, even Jatin got a raid in, in the back while that was all happening. Although this caravan's under threat now, so Dave might get one punch back here. If he can. Oh, he does, he does have to force the garrison, so. Oh, might force another garrison too, or potentially get a kill here. See if oh, Jatin... that's, that's nice. He, yeah, should, he probably will kill, yeah. He does deny it, so he kills his own own caravan to avoid giving away the plunder. Nice move. Ooh, this is a real... This is a real battle on our hands we've got here. I feel like... This is looking uh, very interesting. I, yeah. I can't even really tell uh, who's doing better right now. Yeah. I mean, good raids, good raid defense. I um, feel like maybe the turning point here is the the different uh, choice of Patriots, so Despot versus Senator, and whether Jatin needs to fill his eco to try and make the most of the fact that his you know military is not going to be as strong. Um, yeah, seems like Dave is going for round two. He's upgrading his hoplites. Um, and yeah, Jatin should be able to save that diamonds. Yeah. He's trying to get as much plunder as he can. Meanwhile, Jatin with a nice raid there. Gonna deny the cotton. Nice little kill. Meanwhile, Dave is going for the siege factory. Um, so I'm wondering if this means, if this is a fake or if this is a real medieval age attack. Yeah. I mean, look at the ecos. Chatton actually has a much stronger eco overall. He's only got, uh, Dave's only got relics. He doesn't have any other rares in his possession at the time being. 
it looks like Bison was raided earlier, so I think there were some raids there that may have been off camera, which uh, are putting Jatin in a really great position just on a, an eco versus eco basis. Yeah, I agree, I agree. So yeah, that diamonds, uh, that's sloppy work from Jaden. He should have placed it in such a way that yeah. he could have just instantly garrisoned it. So that's the second time he's gonna lose that one. Yep. That... So gotta be, gotta be annoying. Yeah, for sure. On, a, yeah, on on the flip side, he's using sugar right now. That's that's a nice one. Um, for for Dave, it's only the relics at the moment. I don't know why he's not using bison. I think it would be quite beneficial. Yeah, I think uh, he did have a merchant on there. It was raided earlier, but as, oh yeah. As for why he hasn't replaced it yet, yeah. Oh, it does look like he is prepared for this uh, incoming heavy cavalry. He's got two camels out the back of Dave's base. Jaden has science level two now. He has a, he has a, you know, his the knowledge is slightly better. The wealth is slightly better. His overall economy is also slightly better. And I feel like having salt, sugar, and diamonds is also having the better end of the rares. Um, you know, for Dave, it's only that relics really that matters. Oh my god, can you see this? Uh, Red Fort going down, um, <laughs> which is behind, just behind his main city. That, that is a big call, but um, yeah, can you talk us through what, what's the power of Red Fort here? Like, how does it play into the dynamic of the game? Well, if you finish the Red Fort, it means that unless you're Gunpowder or Enlightenment Age, it's going to be very hard to capture uh, that front city or any of those two front cities. So that gives Jatin, you know, a very a position where he can boom up without any reper recur reper reper Mm -hmm. So that's that. Also, a benefit of the Red Fort is having free, free uh, upgrades from your castles for the whole game. So that actually, you know, it, it gets quite expensive later on. So yeah, finishing that fort would be very nice for Jatin. But the problem is, and I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really afraid that the same thing is going to happen as in game three. I think. When we saw Americans versus Romans, again, Jaden building the wonder, but does he have enough units? Does he, have, does he have enough army to defend? Yeah, exactly right. I mean, there's pretty much like next to no crossbowmen he's building here, which is exactly what we talked about last time this happened against uh, a massive crossbow army of, of Dave's. But this Red Fort's really close to finishing, and that's going to help defend this position by, like, by its nature. Look, it finishes. So, I mean, oh. Look at this nice. thing. This might be, oh man, this might be actually <laughs> very good for Jatin in the end because this city doesn't even have any economy for Jatin at all. Look at those arrows it's firing. They're like, <laughs> it's, like <laughs> it's like halfway across the map. I mean, this is, oh, he does capture the city though. So that resets the um the caravans. Oh, so, oh baby, look at this. Uh, yeah. uh, Jatin is aging to gunpowder, man. What? Oh, da, 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 da. and losing that siege is not something you wanna. No. You wanna no. allow right now. No, no. Jat and Jat and Jat and holy, he holy heck. Holy, this this is um yeah he's gone into the the top drawer here, <laughs> and he's got his bag of tricks out because he's got a nice eco. I mean, if those caravans hadn't reset, his eco would be pretty much. Uh, fantastic across the board. So, but uh, yo, yo, Dave, I like him. I like, I like that guy. He, he just, he's like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Let's, <laughs> let's turn around and he, maybe he will go for the cap now. I mean, if you're Dave, you're trying to take on this position. That red fort just makes it almost Bro. untenable. Like you and need. And also, yeah. it's yeah, it's it's sorry, it's not a very, you know, I don't really want to take that city because there's not even any economy for Jatin there. Let's say Jatin loses the city, that yeah. red fort is in a perfect spot to, you know, stop any further attack. So his economy is intact, he can still make army. Ooh, Jatin does not see that Dave is going for a sneaky attack on his cap. And um, I was just checking his view there. It just went through the fog of war at the very edge, but it looks Ooh. like it, it's probably he's not... Gonna, he's gonna see it. Yeah, it's no, it's no cap sack, but it's still, um, 
That's a lot of commitment there from Dave. He's, Dave's actually got to be a bit careful too because this could be a master stroke. It could backfire too. He's a, he could get trapped. Just has to be careful. He could he could get trapped here, but oh, Dave lost Dave lost his general. So attrition Ooh. attrition needed from Jaden. If he gets that attrition going, this army is completely destroyed here in the middle. This is so exciting. Yeah, what what killed his uh, patriot there? Did he just delete it? The 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 city fire, the city fire. Oh. He wasn't uh, yeah. uh, you know paying attention there. Yeah, yeah, the city fire killed. Wow, a really nice raise too by look at this from Jatin. Mameluke is there one of the best raiding uh, mobile units you can get. So basically, uh, yeah, the same as uh, hold on. same as dragoons, um, except. The special unit version of it. Look at this big battle here. Ooh, it's tricky. It's like gunpowder units versus medieval, but at the same time, Dave has a bigger army, more units. Ooh, this is a bit of madness here. <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of this. Look at all these crossbowmen, like boars. <laughs> They're just sitting there in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the attrition should be coming up soon, I think, for Jad, and so then that's gonna be the final straw. And yeah. we can safely say that Dave lost all of his army there. And yeah. probably it wasn't worth it. In fact, it wasn't worth it in the end. If you look at the military, 30 kills for Dave, 46 units lost. So yeah, that reflects also in that number. Yeah, but I mean, like this is like a massive uh, high IQ moment of building this red fort because if i'm dave i'm thinking how can i kill my opponent here and the only way to take that out i'm thinking is uh, like it's just so hard you probably need to wait until like, you yeah. get airplanes like 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 yeah. honestly you need at least like enlightenment age or like gunpowder age cannons like four of them to really yeah just... but the problem is jatin has the uh economy advantage right now so how how do you how do you you can't out boom jet by, by this point, probably. Yeah. It's gonna be hard. Ooh, diamonds will go down again. <laughs> but. Ah, oh, come on, man. It wasn't the right position, though. He just. Uh, it, it literally instantly died, so. I'll give, yeah. him, give him a pass mark for that one. These Mamelukes did some good damage by the looks of it. Um, Dave Zico's still in 150. He hasn't got Commerce 3 yet. And his knowledge income is only 83. Oh, actually, his knowledge income's double Jatins. I'm a bit confused. <laughs> What's going on here? Where yeah, I don't know. That relics uh, helps out, of course, but still, he has he has more scholar. He has seven scholars. Yeah, I mean, the fact that Jatin aged up so much faster made me think that he must have had more knowledge than uh, than he really did. Well, if you look at what happens right now, Jatin is now the one who has two cannons, he has a decent army there, but Dave, having lost his army completely, he hasn't really been remaking yeah. uh, any units yet. So, and, 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 yeah, if you check it out, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm slightly ahead of you, sorry, but. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah. Looks like a raid coming in from the left now from Dave, and, it was funny actually, those pikemen targeted the watchtower as opposed to the merchant um, near Cotton at the top. Oh, we can see here though, the castle trying to go up. It looks like Jatin will be able to catch this, these guys unaware, just trying to get this, this castle up. And that's going to be an issue for Dave. It's going to be big because, yeah, first of all, defense and also no, no tactics, no operations upgrade yeah. without a castle. So if, if Dave can, I mean, if Jatin can push uh, his advantage here if he can deny the castle he'll probably will win the game here he just yeah. needs to keep spamming units and keep fighting this and microwing his army yeah i mean dave's doing everything right though he's continuing to raid all well, both players continuing to raid in the back of all this multitasking is insane right now but yeah jatin's just pushing the issue at the front lines just trying to almost ram his way through Castle was denied too, so that is a big deal. Not cheap to build another castle. 
Not to forget, Jadon is using salt as well all this time. So yeah, this is a very beneficial position for him. He can yeah. just spam, spam uh, units. Yeah, I mean, salt and sugar is, is... I don't know. I'm, I personally think they're the two best rares in the game. In as far as like all rounders go. So yeah, he's definitely making the most of them. Although Dave is definitely uh, pushing back here as well. He's spamming his enough, enough of his own units to at least make Jatton think twice. Yeah, though that cavalry helped by Dave, but yeah, you know how it goes in Rise of Nations. It's like in waves. Yeah. You overtake, then your enemy overtakes. And look at that, he lost the... Uh... GG is called. Wow, that was uh, that was abrupt, bro. He lost the Monarch and he was like, yeah, nah, it's over. And it was over, because yeah, yeah, that city was about to go down. Yeah. What a, what a game, man, what a game. This was... This was a great watch. One of the, I think, one of the coolest games. I don't know. That was one of the coolest games I ever seen in this tournament. Even. Yeah. Like all the games so far have been one of the best games I've seen ever, in one v one. My God. So, do you think? I mean, can we go past that red fort? Was it the red fort which, <laughs> which won it? I mean, that was uh, that was a god he, tier to move honest, right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Red Ford did it, to be honest. I'm not gonna lie, because yeah. they've invested so much into his medieval army back then, and Jatin didn't have much army again, so he really needed that Red Ford to complete to hold on to this city. And also, uh, the trick here is that Front City doesn't have any economy, it only has the fort and the barracks and stables, so losing that city is not a big problem you can still maintain your production of yeah. units and c c come back you know yeah, yeah what a great game no that w that was so that means the scoreboard will be updated that is officially three games to two in this best of nine you know what that means <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> means we're about to jump into game number six <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right that's right that's right but wait wait does that mean... Wait, does that mean that... Oh, no, it doesn't mean that. Because I thought, yeah, if Dave had the fourth game, that he only would need one more game to win the tournament. But, yeah, we're not there yet. It's yeah. still uh, it's a, a close battle. Yeah, this is unprecedented. I don't think we've ever done, like, a tournament best of nine before. And, um, yeah, I don't think we ever want to do that in Nomad games because it would just take... Literally half a oh. day. <laughs> oh, that's a, like a whole day you have to. <laughs> that's a that's that's a nine to five, man. That, for real. That would be a real nine to five. But um, no, it, it is possibly in one v one standard, thankfully. So, um, do you need do you need a, a couple of minutes, or do you want to do one more and then we'll take a, a five minute break? We can do that. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. All right, let's um let's jump into game number two. Um. Bear with me, guys. I'll just put the Be Right Back screen on, and then we'll be starting game number two in one minute.
All right, guys, we are back, and three, two, one, go for this oh. this sixth replay in this best of nine series between Dave versus Jatton. Let's have a look. We've had some awesome games, and we just saw Jatton pull out a win to bring it back to three games to two. So what nations have we have in store of us? Is it going to be another mirror matchup? We have Jatton with Aztecs, interesting, versus 
Dave picking Japanese here. So, <clears throat> what do you think? Um, I know I've heard Jatin actually talking about Aztecs a lot and saying how, in his view, they're quite weak until you know you get to the Gunpowder Age and faster nations can just overpower them. But at the same time, I feel like they kind of fit his playstyle, which is for that ultra aggressive raiding and despot kind of action. So yeah. He, he does that stuff very well. Uh, as you see, he's going mill one, so he's he's going to get that free cheeky unit. He's going to hopefully get some ruins off of that. But yeah, overall, I think it's interesting. It's going to be an interesting dynamic because we have, we have a despot Aztecs probably versus a, I'm speculating, a, probably a booming Japs with, you know, maybe Senator or something like that. I see that he has relics there, so booming up isn't such a bad idea. And it's gonna be all about can Jaden uh, maybe raid Dave enough or do enough damage, or will Dave defend so well that it's gonna be hard to raid and overtake Aztecs in the long run? But in either case, yeah, once the Aztecs hit Gunpowder, even if they have a worse economy, they can still kill anyone. Yeah, and I can see that um, Dave is not stuffing around here. He's already gone for military before Commerce or Civic himself. And building that barracks so that he will be able to, you know, one on one defend mm. whatever Chatton throws at him. Which, I must admit, I've I normally have seen in these circumstances um, just you know players defending with citizens against these, you know, the adult adult the light infantry. But I guess that's one surefire way to do it is just to build your own units and fight them man on man. Yeah, but yeah, it's it would be hard against a player like Chatton to. Uh, kill one of those uh, at atl atls because Jaden yeah. has a great micro, so he wouldn't. He would just run back, and while you're chasing, you're losing losing eco. But that was a nice move by Dave. He basically knew that this was coming. That's you know the high level Rise of Nations player. They they know each other. They know Aztecs will probably go mill one and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. And it looks like. Yeah, he did get one citizen kill, which is nice. Got 15 plunder there, which was food. Um, now jatton has got his city up. Eco's not too bad. Let's have a quick look at the, uh, the ruins. 450 each, so it's a dead heat. Oh, it's a uh, fair game here. Yeah, it's always good to see from a, a neutral perspective when uh, a game's not decided partially by ruins. So, yeah, it looks like we're, up, we're set for a really good one here. If, we, if you look at the rares here, the only rare that's worth considering for Jaden really is that diamonds, if he can control it, but that's not so self-evident since it's not completely in his territory. Maybe that cotton as well, if you want to be aggressive, you can pump out units very fast. And that amber is kind of uh, too far, I guess, but yeah, the citrus and marbles kind of sucks. While for yeah. Dave, having relics so deep in his territory is so beneficial. He'll probably have, to, uh, he'll probably market it, and it will be safe. Die on the top corner can be cool as well. Tobacco and bison are also better than you know citrus, for example. So I think a slight advantage for Dave in, in terms of actually a pretty good advantage in terms of rares for Dave. Yeah, I would agree <laughs> with that. I think. Um... Yeah, if this diamonds were a bit closer, um, then it might be a bit more even, but it just feels like it's just outside of his sphere of influence here, whereas you can cannot doubt that those relics are basically in the heartland of Japan right now. There's no way uh, they, yep. they can be raided with ease. Um, anyway, regardless of this, um, Jatin is going to be aging first. I guess investing in those two slingers did um, slow down Dave because you know Jaden he only had to make one uh, slinger because he got one for free yeah that's true I mean it was a free unit and forced a response and yeah you can see uh, Jaden's actually using the citrus here so that's how desperate times are <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah well yeah you can you can eat eat uh, citruses now if he wants yeah yeah, that's nice. Uh, stable for Jaden. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we will see some light horses. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like light horses on infinite Q. So uh, I suspect I know Jaden. He likes to use the light horses not only to harass but also as a second version of a scout. Um, basically, it's got multiple benefits. Yeah, you, you can do some real economic damage, but also gives you a really good peek at what your opponent's actually doing. Yeah, like there's there's several benefits I feel like from having those light horses. First of all, you force your opponent to make light horses probably because he still doesn't have mill no two or you know. And also by running around, you 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 get an active update of your enemy's territory, so you're 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 actually up to date to what's happening there. So yeah. Yeah, and I feel like it also sets him up if he wants to. He can go for that fast commerce too. Um, or fast civic too, and def basically defer his mill two until a little bit later in the game. Yeah, while still having some pressure going yeah. on. Yeah. Ooh. Nice tower there, Dave. Put that in a, almost the perfect position. <laughs> it's uh, on the other side of his wood camp, but the side which the opponent's normally going to approach from. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, uh, still no, no uh, Senate from Jaden, so we he's probably delaying that. Um, he's getting civics level two though, but that might be not the best idea because Dave is ready for that second city. He has uh, some units, and if he's careful enough, he might catch. Well, he's falling back now. So yeah. maybe not. Uh, I guess I guess Jaden will go for that diamond. So if, if he gets that, that will be that will be a nice catch there. Ooh, what do you think of this? Yeah, so he's building the city in a little bit of an unusual position. I would have thought he'd build it closer to the the wood line there, but again, yeah, maybe it's just the best of both worlds, trying to capture the wood and keep uh, you know being close to those diamonds too. Yeah, you're right though. It's interesting that he goes for a more like of a defensive uh, mm. uh, placement of his city. You know, it's not. He could have grabbed that wood if he wanted to, but maybe he was afraid f f for uh, getting his city cancelled. So yeah, he's, he's he's gonna lose that wood now, that center wood. Yeah, I also wonder if there was maybe the caravan routes. He wanted to make sure that they were more defendable. But anyway, yeah, yeah could be. we'll have to uh, put that one on the list of post-game interview questions <laughs> to ask. that's right yeah. well, hopefully we can catch some uh yeah yeah post-game interviews actually yeah it will be nice yeah yeah for sure um oh so you can see dave is putting up his third city he is not afraid to build it as far forward as possible as we can see um building right in the front of that wood and i think that might make jatton stable vulnerable um able to be sieged down pretty easily from there if that city goes up actually and also like you know we talked about the caravan routes this will make the caravan route vulnerable as well there yeah this is interesting com 2 coming up from Jaden. they've already has it you know given japanese he has a nice food income right now He's doing well, he's doing well. Um, in terms of wealth and knowledge, a slight lead for Jaden. Um, but let's see, I'm wondering what the overall game plan is here. It seems like Dave is fine going for very light raids. He hasn't really done any damage. I've seen he lost a couple units, uh, you know, while trying to raid actually. But yeah, he's getting his eco up. Temple on that forward city will push back Chatton even slightly more. I think he should try to harass that caravan there. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Um, interestingly, yeah, no, no mill 2 yet from, uh, from Dave. Yeah. Um, I do see that yeah, there's a death spot there for Dave. Yeah. Yeah, Japanese with Despot. Oh, maybe he'll go for a super heavy attack again. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, so Despot on both sides. But the one thing, I, I'd have to fact check this, but I think Dave has gone Despot every single game so far. Does that sound right? I think so. Because even the Persia <laughs> game, he was 
their spot and yeah yeah let's see aging up now as well so Jatin will hit age three first but you can see that these guys are starting to marshal and um, it looks like Dave is probably going to get aggressive he's building a siege factory behind his front city here I'm still surprised that Dave hasn't tr tried to harass that caravan yes. route there. It's such an easy target. But I guess he has different plans. Oh yeah, I just saw in the chat. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys for uh, pointing out. Yeah, I think Dave went um, senator in that Inca match. And that was when he had to because Jatton was just raiding so hard that it was probably a, a defensive decision. Hey, um, I'm not gonna lie, Jatton, in terms of his economy, is doing pretty well considering the opponents is Japs. Like, I wouldn't say Dave is leading in, in economy really. It's a slight lead, by best, you know. The wealth is the same, pretty much the same economies for both of them, but yeah, uh, Jatin does have that Aztec power. Yeah, exactly, which is ultimately an economic bonus, which you can't really measure, but if they have a fight, it will start to come into effect, of course. And you can see here, he's getting very aggressive here with his army, trying to snipe that siege. Nice micro by Dave, runs away and garrisons in the city, so no harm done, but... Yeah, this Ooh, is... Ooh, that's what's up. Explosiveness with Aztecs is always a nice idea. Yeah. Just uh, if you can catch your opponent, it's very nice. Yeah. And that did force Dave back there. Yeah, absolutely. Forcing the issue and... Dave is a little bit... Um, looks apprehensive about taking an engagement here. Just falling back, falling back and um, garrisoning his units and just kind of reassessing the situation. Maybe it's about time Jatin fell back here. He probably will. Uh, careful for the death spot there. Oh, the yeah. death spot Ooh. will get caught at like at the edge there. That was so close. That's like a hundred wealth for Dave. Or I don't know, maybe Jatin deleted it. I didn't see. But now this is a problem. This is a really annoying position like logistically for Jatin. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what you're gonna do about this? You have to... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's in... He's stuck in a really terrible position now, because that city was a little bit further back, and now he's got to, yeah, worry about this massive natural <laughs> mountain in the middle of them. I don't know what... And also, yeah, Gunpowder Age is still far away for Jatin, so yeah, the... The big savior of the Aztecs is not close yet, you know? He's not gonna get those free yes. um, gunpowder units yet. Yeah, he, did you see that? He said in the chat, that caravan route. I'm pretty sure that caravan's going all the way around that mountain for no reason. Except just, yeah. to, <laughs> just to annoy Jaden. <laughs> if, if we ever... God, please help us that we do. But if you ever make a remake of Rise of Nation, there should be an option where you can like kind of manipulate your caravan route slightly. Yeah. That's it. Is maybe that... it maybe it costs like one wealth per meter that you change it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you make them go a longer way, like it, it'll take longer for them to set up. So it's kind of like naturally balances out, I think. Well, yeah. this looks bad for the, uh, for Jaden, man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter what format of the game, this could be Nomad or Standard or anything, but whenever you're faced with one army, you know, that can basically go left or right, and you can only defend on one side, then yeah, this is really tricky. Um, if Dave plays his cards right here, he, he could potentially build towers and just fortify this, this middle area to make it even harder. Uh, looks like Jatton won't, won't take any chances though. He's going for the raid on the, the mine. I don't mind that. Trying to sneak. Mine gets under. stuck now. Yeah, he's got to be careful. He can't. He can't suicide his units. That's one thing. He's got to be careful of. Ah oh, man, I don't think I don't think Jaden will be able to to reach Gunpowder, and that's that's his big 
gold, honestly, right now. Again, David was medieval. He, Dave really likes his medieval uh, aggressiveness. Yeah, it's it's worked for him most of this game so far, where he hasn't been caught off guard by a red fort or by some uh, excellent Inca raids. I mean, it's... ow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, again, he, he keeps losing those caravans, and yeah. he lost a lot of his units just now. I didn't really. Uh, catch that, but he basically doesn't have an army right now. So, ah uh, man, unfortunately, I, I guess this this might be, uh, yeah, you know, could be knocking on the door of a GG here for Dave. And this is the best of well, nine. Yeah. So he's still, even if Dave does win this, he's still going to win uh, one more game. But yeah, I don't know how he saves yeah. the city. We can we can compare the libraries real quick. Um, Jasmine is ready for the gunpowder. Dave yeah. still doesn't even have his science level 2, but he might not even need because if he gets that city... Well, actually, I don't know. I'm not gonna talk too much right now because Jasmine is gonna be gunpowder very soon and maybe he can kill that H3 army. Let's see. Yeah, he is... Um, I mean, he is Aztecs. We can't forget that. Maybe that's been the strategy all along, is that whatever it takes to get the gunpowder, as long as he gets there and he's Aztecs, he's in with a chance. Yeah. So I would still say that Dave has to be the favorite at this point, well and truly, but you can't completely write him off yet. Castle going up too. Um, so. Actually, Jadlin is not doing that bad. <laughs> um, because... His economy is still intact, you know, mostly. His eco is not dead. Yeah, he just um, he just said in the chat, I'm glad I lost that city. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he might be getting cockier and like saying like, oh, you got the city, but I'm gonna win the game, bitch. <laughs> yeah, could be. Boom, gunpowder goes up. So he does have that sweet, sweet gunpowder tech now. And more importantly, well, that bonus goes up now to 60. Thunder. And also, well, Dave is also clicking up now, so maybe in the end it was not worth it. Uh, probably not. Yeah. Oh, Dave's getting his own plunder with his death spot here. And that is a big army from Dave. Ooh, Jatin's starting to get the odd plunder here and there. You can see whenever that 75 comes up on the screen. That's a lot of resources to get. So, Dave has aged up. Now he's falling back. Get his units upgraded. Um, yeah. Still a chance, not gonna lie. Yeah, I mean, one, one good engagement for Jatin here. Could be all he needs to kind of swing that balance back. And I know he doesn't like that city, but he really does need to retake it because <laughs> it might be frustrating, but it's really important that he secures that territory. Yeah, man. He he will capture it back, but... Now, uh, one one chance I see for Jatin is the fact that Dave has so many archers left over. Right? If you count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Eight archers, and that's basically the, to the totality of his army. And you know, those archers are not gonna survive against the Archibus here, so you know, yeah, heavy horse. Once he starts, hopefully, spamming some, they're um, they're not useless, but then definitely nowhere near as strong as age three. So, that's definitely also in Jatin's favor right now is that Dave's army is primarily mm, somewhat obsolete. And definitely, Jaden needs sieges because I feel like he he has he actually has a the upper hand kind of in terms of army, in terms of being Aztecs, in terms of you know the fact that every fight he takes is actually kind of good for him. Yeah, absolutely. I, he, I mean, 
normal circumstances, Jatin would probably be pushing the issue here, trying to um, egg on Dave for a big fight, but he has to be smart about it. His army is still definitely smaller, and these crossbowmen aren't incredibly strong, but they still provide a fair bit of bulk to this army of Dave's. Yeah, that's for sure. That's the, the HP and still some damage Yeah, there. Um, let's see, so far, yeah, uh, nothing special going on. Dave is upgrading the Bombard, catapults to the Bombards. No mill 4 yet for either of them. But this seems to be like a very, how can I say, it seems to be like it's going to be going down in H4. All the action. Yeah. Commerce 3 from Jatin. Oh, yeah. But they both have their armor up, so... Ooh, it looks like Dave is going to try and take the city again. And I don't know what Jatin's response is going to be here. I mean, ironically, if Jatin wanted to, he could trap Dave's army into that little hole there. By he bringing should, uh, his army across. Yeah, he should start harassing Dave. And I think, um, let's see, I think those archers really might be a problem, but Dave has a good amount of um, heavy knights. That's that's going to be a game changer. Yeah, for sure. Those heavy knights are massive, and Jatin really doesn't have many. He's only got two. Although, keep an eye on the plunder. Yeah. If, if he can get some nice plunder off, the reinforcements should be faster for for Jatin as well. Yeah, Jatin might actually overtake in the end here. Once he gets to kill those archers, he he will get some nice uh, plunder. Yeah. So yeah, once the, the heavy cavalry is gone for Dave, Ooh. Um, he can start killing here. Yeah, this is huge. Uh, he, he got through the first wave and now you can see all those light infantry and and Archer's basically got to run away, the crossbowmen. And Ooh, wow. this uh, this game is kind of tilting back into Jatin's favor. Or <laughs> is this too early to say? No, 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 no. Your 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 observation is quite correct, man. Yeah. Um, it's just just too bad that Jatin doesn't have any sieges to like you know really be able to uh, give Dave a big blow. Yeah. I mean, Jatin has four barracks at the moment, so that is some serious production there. Dave's only reinforcing out of the two of each. But I mean, yeah, eco-wise, pretty similar across both players. They're both despot, but obviously Jatin has a huge eco economic advantage with this Aztec special power. It's all about the micro now. Look at that cavalry. That's a big blow. Oh, that's very nice. Uh, Dave was getting sloppy there, yeah. and he's gonna lose a lot of, a lot of things there. Oh man, that's a lot of plunder that he's getting. 60, 60, 60. Whew. Economies are very similar, pretty much uh, the same. A better knowledge income for Jad and though, meanwhile, and better f uh, wood income, but it's pretty similar in terms of eco, but. Yeah, the Aztec power, you know, fighting gives them resources, so... Yeah. If you look at uh, the, each player, the amount of resources they have in the bank, usually Jatin has slightly more resources in the bank. Yeah. Ooh, Dave got a nice bribe off there. Oh, that was a, that was for the raiding unit at the very top, so nice raid defense. But yeah, jatin has been raiding behind this whole time as well. He got some nice plunder from couple of heavy calves, but it looks like Dave was doing a pretty decent job too of defending that, so nice back and forth. Yeah, this, those heavy knights now are very dangerous, they might actually break Jatin here. Seems like uh, Dave is getting back cool. into it. Yeah, nice bribe though, he took one of those heavy calves for his own. Oh man. It's, it's very close. Looks like Dave just seems to have more spam of, of heavy calves to support. It's gonna come down to yeah that metal and he gold. yeah and he made he made the heavy caps and it helps him out to push Chatton back. But if you look at the bigger picture here, look at 
uh, by the way, Dave was the first guy to get mill 4 and he had operations, to, so that explains why Jatin started losing here. Yeah. Uh, partly. But Jatin has a sick wealth income right now. It was actually even higher before, it was 190. And his knowledge income is also considerably better than Dave. Now he has operations yeah. as well, getting it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's all good. It's not over yet for either of them. No, that, <clears throat> that's it. But it does look like Dave is, um, yeah, jockeying himself back into position here. He'll be able to capture the city again for uh, not the first time in this game. And I don't know if that's going to impact Chatton too much. Oh, there is one caravan route which uh, is going to that city again. <laughs> he must be so frustrated by that because he could technically redirect it to the other city. But um, no, the AI has decided to go to... The most dangerous pathway. It's like going through Iraq right here, as far as uh, trade routes go. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, mm. City go does go down, so Dave has retaken that. And I mean, yeah, what? Where to from here? I guess it's probably going to be another fight. I think that's what Jatin is getting ready for. He looks like he's going to charge. Oh, Dave is uh, running away. Probably gonna catch these bombards. Oh, geez, look at that bombard. It's got some serious uh, performance enhancing <laughs> drugs on <right> there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, he got away. And I mean, probably a nice retreat there by, by Dave. No point taking a fight when it's not on his own terms. Ooh, yeah, I feel like, I feel like Jatin is aiming for enlightenment and I also feel like Jaden if he if he doesn't make any stupid mistakes right now he will get to enlightenment faster than Dave because he has a shitload of spare knowledge in the bank um, yeah it's just the question is yeah he should when he goes enlightenment he should have some siege ready he should uh, you know be ready to actually finally attack Dave properly yeah exactly and enlightenment I just feel like, yeah, Aztecs in Enlightenment Age, because you can get, you know, the um, Minutemen as well. There's a lot of power. So, oh, this looks like... It, am, am I seeing nice this? Nice pushback. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, you're seeing correct, man. <laughs> what's, what's happening right now? He's really applying a lot of pressure, and I'm trying to figure out if Dave's just retreating strategically, or if, if Dave's retreating because yeah, he's forced to retreat. That's a good question. But regardless, right now, uh, you know, his metal income is... So Suffering, I don't know. Maybe Jatin should be careful still, because he, he he might lose too much here. Because the castle fire, the city fire. I think maybe Jatin made a slight miscalculation. Yeah. Probably a, yeah, a little bit too eager. Nice raids by Dave too. He's really denying that wood and um, yeah, causing a lot of idle time there at the main base. And Enlightenment Age coming up for Jatin. But Dave is uh, doing some nice raids there, uh, really, really tampering with Jatin's economy. Let's see. Yeah, Dave is not ready for enlightenment yet. He's not, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. This is so exciting. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah. What, what's mm -hmm. what's Jatin going to do? Is he just going to go for it as soon as he gets his caresses? I don't know, bro. Like, I would suspect that he would make some sieges, but he still hasn't made any sieges. So maybe he'll try to go for a hockey star type of play and just have a huge alignment age army force Dave to garrison. But wow, Dave is already aging too now. So the difference wasn't that big. So it's a problem that Jatin doesn't have sieges, I think. Yeah, I mean, at this stage, Jatin's got such a, a bank up of knowledge. It's almost like he should maybe go for industrial. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm not expecting the game to get to uh, necessarily get that far. But I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, what do you do here? Go for the commandos, maybe. Perhaps if you if you reach um, and uh, industrial, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how Jatin is planning to win this without any sieges. Like I said, he he's going for a hockey star type play, yeah. and he's going. To, going to try to get deep into Dave's territory and do some damage that way. But yeah. uh, it might not work out because Dave actually has a big army. Yeah, Dave actually has a big army, so 
Jasmine might lose. Yeah, this is a bit of a risky play, but he could collect a lot of plunder if, if he does a drive-by and just doesn't lose all these units um, unnecessarily. Yeah, he's got nice tower placement though, so it's not making life any easier. Look at these Caracias chasing him down. Oof, this is still a bit of chaos though. Sometimes this works in Aztec's favor. If, he, if Dave's not careful, he could lose a lot of citizens in his home base. Finally, I see a siege factory from Jadon. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's a good distraction what Jadon did just now, but I don't know, he did lose a lot of units still. And the economy is looking good for Dave. I mean, not bad. Um, slightly yeah. better than Jadon's. But not too big of a problem. Ooh. I can see that um, Dave has built the gun Samurais as well. Yeah. Which is, uh, I can't remember, there was one Japanese unit I remember he did a video on which you, you upgrade them and they're actually worse than the... Uh, the I think it was the gun Samurai, but I can't believe it. I don't believe it. Yeah, I mean, gun Samurais, it just sounds I, really I cool. refuse. Yeah. I refuse to believe it. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, let's check out the stats. It's 205 HP versus 200, so it has 5 HP more than a normal Fusilier. Okay. And the attack, they have one attack more, 21 versus 20, so in theory it should be better. Yeah, I think it's something to do with the fire rate maybe, but anyway, it can't be too bad if Dave himself has upgraded him in a tournament game for the grand final, so... Well, yeah. Well, that's uh, yeah. By the way, yeah, that, that, that city of Tio, it's now officially in, incorporated into Dave's uh, Japanese empire. I don't think Jatin is going to be getting it back anytime soon. And now, yeah, Dave is dominating, I'm not going to lie. He just needs to make a couple more sieges, siege everything down. And... Yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah, just, just the, the one bombard at the moment, but if he spams a few more, all these production buildings are going to get destroyed. And importantly, yeah. when Jatin rebuilds them, he won't get any bonus um, again, like the, the free units. To be honest, I think uh, Dave will probably kill this in Enlightenment Age. Because, um, yeah, yeah, he has a nice army there. It's gonna be tough. Yeah. I think maybe Jatin needs to go for the Red yeah. Fort, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the thing is, uh, I've seen Jaden um, win with Aztecs from very, from a disfavorable position before. So I'm not gonna write him off. But um, I don't know. If you look at Dave's economy, look at that. Now it's it's really st starting to shine. Yeah, and Dave's been raiding nonstop this entire game. She's been constantly putting Jatin on the back foot behind enemy lines too. Yeah, I think I think it's uh I think it's a good game. Yeah. It's gonna be very tough now. Here we go. Looks like he's posturing to uh go in for the kill soon. Yeah, yeah. Sieging everything down, very nice. So he'll he'll have a nice spot to attack from. Yeah, a good clear pathway. Look yeah, at that. I see Dave yeah. is adding some units, yeah. That wealth income from Dave too, 259. Wow, that's, that's great, man. Yeah. Five caravans. Here we go. Looks like he is slowly inching ahead. He might kill this uh, temple first, just to clear the pathway. Siege the city down first as well. Continuing to raid, taking out this caravan by the looks of it. That's what you need anyway, being against Aztec. You just need a bigger army so that, you know, you, you win. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah, that's it. 
Because it's when the armies are similar in size, then it's actually not bad for Aztecs. They can keep keep up the production, probably. If they have a somewhat decent eco. Yeah. Here we go. He's pushing in. That's a big army from Dave. Don't know if Jatin's going to have enough to hold, but the city is holding up for the time being. Where are the spies at? Let's see if there are any bribes going down. Oh, bribe does go down there. Hmm. Will we see the the militia pool by Jatin, the H5 militia pool? Yeah. That might be a last resort. Actually, he doesn't have a tower right now, so I can't see if he's researched it. City does go down, so that yeah. is definitely one hand on the on the uh, game for Dave. I mean, yeah. Huge blow to Jatin's economy. All those farms. And yeah, it looks like he doesn't have Minutemen. Actually, he doesn't have, yeah, doesn't have Militia. Like... Yeah, Militia or Minutemen. So, Minutemen could have made the difference here, but it's an expensive upgrade too. 270. Yeah, it would have bought him time, but still. Yeah. And yeah, it, I must admit, this game was like swinging back and forth like a seesaw for a while there, so... That's one thing, that's sure. Um, I don't know, I think I think Jatin had, uh, had decent chances. Uh, maybe even in Gunpowder, he should have... If he had Siege in Gunpowder, he was he was pushing Dave's army back very badly, so if he had Siege and could, you know, yeah. get that city down to zero HP, yeah, he had the good chance. He just missed the window of opportunity. Also with H5, the same thing. I feel like if he had those sieges ready instantly already. Yeah, he calls GG. And that is an official game. Another win for Dave to chalk up on the board. And um, yeah, we're at officially at four games to Dave, two games to Jatin. So, yep. oh, oh man, GG. Well, GG. And I think, um, I mean, going into this game, do you think uh, nation-wise, I, I guess Japs normally have the edge, right? Is that the... Yeah, yeah, but I mean, Essex is a nation that if played correctly, they can beat anyone, so... Uh, and we saw that, actually. It wasn't that close at all. Um, I think, imagine if Chat and Scaravan didn't go that way or imagine if he in another dimension in another universe mm. that mountain wasn't there you know that mountain didn't exist and then you wouldn't have this awkward separation i think uh, jadon would have had a much better chance there but yeah he decided to place that city down there because he wanted to, to get the diamonds uh the city of tio so yeah. he yeah. paid he paid a price for that as well so it, it was like you know it's, it was his choice, so... Yeah, yeah. but it, exactly, that third city did handicap him badly. If, if it, that did not occur, maybe he would have had he would have had a better chance. Yeah, and he, and he could have built it closer to the wood, right? There was no reason he's stopping him from doing that, from memory. So. Yeah, by the way, yeah, yeah. that's not... Remember, if he built... Yeah, man, he could have built it closely, and then this caravan route wouldn't be that awkward because the angle would be different. Yeah, yeah. man, you're right. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. And even Hirosaki would have been further back too, so he would have been yeah. pushing his opponent. Yeah, it could have who exactly. knows, it could have completely changed things. It could have ended up the same, but he, yeah. I, I don't think yeah, it wouldn't be such a handicap at all. Yeah, the angle would be completely different and stuff. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Good shit. Yeah. No, GG. Well all right. Um geez, let's let's keep going. Let's keep crushing. Sure, bro. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, guys, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Yo.
All right, guys, we're back, and we're now at game number seven of this best of nine series, Jatton versus Dave. Current score is Dave four to Jatton two. Um, all right, let's get this started. Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's go. All right, and the nations for this match is Jatton's picked Koreans versus Dave's Germans. <sighs> What do you what do you think? If you were Jatton's coach right now, are you sighing? Are you putting your the palm? I of your... mean, I I already sighed like you heard me do that just now. So <laughs> I don't know, man. Like let's say I don't know, man. Like I know Jatton has those nation specific plays, but the one time he did it with Americans, it didn't work out. Even though that was a nice try for sure. Uh, I'm wondering how he's gonna play Koreans. I actually I know about. American play but I don't know much about his Korean play so I'm like I don't know myself what's gonna happen here like how is it gonna go up against Germans which have a super nice boom and Korea doesn't really have any benefits really yeah they're, they're kind of defensive but h4 h5 that defensive ability of Koreans it doesn't really matter anymore the bombards are too strong by that time uh, maybe the tower, the cheaper towers, but still, I don't really see. Yeah, I don't really see the point of going Koreans. Yeah, I think maybe part of it is about that that map control, that territory, trying to basically take out this wood. I don't know if that means he might go for a quick sieve too, or just getting that temple down really fast. But um, yeah, it does seem to be. Uh, it's an interesting pick, and maybe militia um, <clears throat> raids as well once he ages up. Could, could factor in here as well but yeah I, I gotta say I think Germans surely are the favorites here unless there's a very specific set play that Jatton's planning to uh, execute that he might have practiced yeah but that being said I am not at all thinking that Jatton is throwing this or that his decision is the wrong decision because I don't know what the right decision is I'm just thinking this will be a bit tougher than usual for Jaden, but given that he's playing in the grand final and he went for the Korean pick, I have confidence that this that he thinks that this will give him the victory. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's well thought out. Um, same as that. I know it was Egypt versus Egypt, but that red fort clearly was uh, his strategy, and I feel like he probably would have done that red fort um, play in probably most circumstances there, regardless of who he was up against. And yeah, I just look forward to seeing what what's in his bag of tricks this time. Very excited. Yeah. yeah let's check out the rares. Um, uh, cotton, pretty safe for Jatten. Uh, wine and wool in the right corner. Kind of nice. I mean, two knowledge rares, but uh, the question is, will he, will he be able to use them? Diamonds in the top corner, uh, silk in the middle there, slightly into Jatten's territory. Um, what does Dave have? He has copper that sucks and sugar in his corner. So, bro, Dave, Dave doesn't have any rares except that sugar, you might argue. Yeah, and even that sugar could be um, theoretically raided by a militia or whatever Jatten might choose to send later on. So, yeah, you're right, that copper is... Um, is literally a lump of useless metal at the moment is not he doesn't need to use it for its resource values and so the only benefit it will give him is give his siege a little bit of extra hp but yeah other than that i'd be saving his merchant and you know potentially using the opponent's <clears throat> merchant instead trying to sneak one off yeah you're right let's see uh dave is aging already and i see he's already has sent a merchant to silk so i suppose he's going for a quick com 2 and his com 2 will be su super cheap because of that silk yeah i it is on the way so yeah it must be um again using your opponent's res he doesn't need to know about it jatton has scouted the silk but yeah has no plans on using it anytime soon jatton's now clicked up himself so yeah, Jatton will be slightly behind in age times, but nothing too crazy at this point. Both players choosing a fairly standard build, while we see Dave is going for a very fast Civic 2. Oh, not again, because this time it will be 
kind of sucky because I I see Jatin is aiming for the civics too as well, but um, it seems like Dave is faster than him, and yeah. I have a feeling he might be able to. <laughs> he might be able to look at this though. Can you see this? Uh, so there's militia um, patrolling in front here. It looks like Jatin is aware that he really wants to make sure he gets this civic down first. And it's militia versus oh he's running away because he's getting kicked by three citizens <laughs> a woman uh, two women and a man wow yeah. i've never seen this well but, uh, yeah citizens Jatin, are really... Jatin is sorry man, you go uh, yeah Jatin has two women i just wanted to point that out <laughs> <laughs> he does have two women and um <laughs> they're they're definitely holding their own because they've got big spears wow yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> But, um, but you know, you know what? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. Uh huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Look at that. And now Jatin is getting his city down. And because he's Koreans, I mean, this city is basically going to go up regardless of what Dave and would try. And suddenly to... babies are made and suddenly, a, you know, a booming population. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look at this Korean birth rate right now. We're about yeah, to see I don't know. It's, it's even worse than the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the instant population versus. All right, let's see this. Boom! There we go. Wow! It's all. Let's let's see. Can we pause and check how many women versus men <laughs> for the statistics? Uh, yeah, mo yeah, it's pretty 50-50. Yeah, hopefully it's not all... that it matters, but it's all women and um, men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all separated to their own tents. It's like, what's going on, guys? Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Look at, look at this, though. He's building the um, temple straight away with all those citizens. And look at this nice border push. So, that, so mm -hmm. suddenly, this stable of Dave's, which he thought was nice and safe, is actually right on the border. And um, yeah, it could be towered if if Jatin chooses to. Uh, yeah. I, Man. I, I like this so far. I mean, and now Jatin's got a heap of, heap of spare citizens from that second city. Um, so his metal mine's pretty much almost at capacity now. He's got a couple of militia raiding as well. Oh, look at this. Sneaky, sneaky Dave. He's uh, sending a merchant out scouting. He hasn't even seen the diamonds yet. <laughs> he's got... Bro, he's, uh, he's going to be happy. He's oh. going to be really, really happy. This is jackpot. Literally struck, struck gold right there. So, yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, obviously we talked about before. He was he'd rather send out a merchant to scout than use copper in his own base. I'm I'm so annoyed that Jaden does this over and over again, and I mean Dave does it over and over again with that corner stuff, and I'm gonna be really mad if Jaden doesn't check diamonds. Because it's obvious that Dave always goes for the corner rare when it's a nice rare. Yeah. He has done this every game so far. Oh, look at the militia by Jatin in the back. They're going for sugar, so he's going to get that. Yeah, nice. That's undefended. And um, at least if he's not covering his own corner rare, at least he's getting his opponent's corner rare. So nice raids there. But yeah, in the meantime, Dave is... Making the most of that sweet, sweet diamonds. Uh, I'd say um, Dave has a pretty okay position because he has two nice woodcutters camps in each city. So, given uh, the German ability to, you know, have cheap upgrades in the lumber mills and stuff, he he should be fine in terms of his wood income. Yeah, I think. Um... How many woodcutter camps spots does he have? Yeah, 10. And they're all within the city radius. So, yeah, like you said, it, sh it should be okay. Not as big of a disadvantage as um, the game earlier in this series when Jatton was really, really starved of wood. But look at this. A uh, bit of a, an ambush move here by Dave as well. Pretty much walking straight through the front lines of Jatton here. Trying to see what's on offer here for his horse archer. He's going to go for this caravan. Let's see if he can get it. Chatton might be able to garrison it. Yes, he does. Nice yep, play. he will. Nice play on both sides. <sighs> hey, bro. 
I suddenly realized something. <laughs> What's that? Uh, Chad is being a re real, really cheeky cunt right now. If you look at his <laughs> library. I mean, Jatin, bro, Jatin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he's going for the territory oh, victory. <laughs> oh, my God. He is going for territory victory. Oh, God damn. We oh, God this, damn is, him. this is legit. This is legit. Yeah, bro. fuck yeah, let's go. Oh, so shit. This oh, might worry because Dave, Dave is... Dave is booming. So usually Dave has like a big <laughs> army, you know, so he can punish stuff like that. But yeah. Jatin, yeah, but he's booming right now. So he, he's going to be like, oh, fuck. Like, like, look at that. He's placing down lumber mills, granaries, yeah, yeah. lumber mills. Yep, yep, yep. Bro. Yeah. Oh, look at this. The city has finished and he pretty much took half the map <laughs> just with that city. So, so what is it? 70%, right? He's at 51.3 at the moment. Bro, hitch, hitch, hitch. Stop it. This will happen. Chatton will do this. He needs a castle or something. He, yeah, and, he, um, he, he needs a castle here, and that will take the top corner. And he's Korean, so he can literally just spam towers and repair, and he cannot be defeated. He cannot be yeah, defeated. So, <laughs> nah, it's impossible. Impossible. It's uh, it's an impregnable strategy. Um, Chatton is gonna place his castle down at the bottom. Yeah. So Ooh. we're gonna see that. Do you like that placement? I was thinking that, that is actually probably the right spot to put it, but he also needs to get that territory at the top there as well. So yeah. maybe he builds he another probably, castle. He probably will get more percent of placing it on the top, but I guess on the top would be maybe slightly too passive because yeah, yeah, it's, it's a long way for generals or spies to go. I don't know. Let's see, let's see. Let's just see how this plays out. This is cool though. This is exciting. I feel like Jatin's been waiting for this moment the entire tournament <laughs> to, to bust out his uh, territory victory strategy. Yep. Yeah. Dave, Dave does understand, I think, what's going on here. And he has experience already from playing against Naoto. He, look at the castle placement from Dave. He's just trying to get more territory right now. Yeah. Obviously. That's true. And maybe that, obviously for that reason, it's smart where Jatin put his castle because, I mean, Dave could have done the same thing at the bottom right hand side and probably opened up a heap of territory okay, as well. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're close to 65%. Um, we're going to be close to 65% right now. And yeah, all the cities are big already for Jatin. So I don't know. He needs, uh, he yeah. needs 5% more. How does he get more territory here? Just he needs to build one more castle, but that's an expensive way to do it. Uh, is there an easier way? I can't think of anything. No, another. Oh, the pyramids. And uh, actually, uh, the pyramids will give him an extra city. <laughs> but this is really ambitious, man. Because <laughs> Dave can just attack if he wants to, I guess. I don't know. Oh. Ironically, though, he he has a higher score too. I know score doesn't mean everything, but I mean, I was expecting Jatin to almost be like behind in score because he's just spamming cities here. But their egos are pretty, oh, man. pretty similar. Man, this sucks because Dave is going Civ 4 now. I mean, it's good for him, but uh, you know, if he places some more cities, he might actually. Well, I don't know, actually. After that, pyramids, that's a big chunk of territory in the corner there yeah no i think i think that's, Jatin, that's gonna be enough that's gonna be enough i think to get that 70 percent oh yeah. it's gonna be very soon <laughs> pyramids at 20 28 percent and um yeah i mean if you were okay if you were in dave's position let's take away the novelty and the fun of uh this territory victory here if you were trying to upset the party and not lose to a territory victory. Oh, here we go. Two minutes 50. <laughs> <laughs> the countdown is on. Oh. All right. The countdown is on. Oh, no. It's, yeah, it's still going. Oh, no. It stopped. It stopped. So, Dave. Anyway, I don't know. Dave is doing a... I don't know. Maybe Dave is making mistakes going for extra civics researches. 
um, because I don't know. I might. I would just try to attack maybe. But I don't know. This is novelty, you know. I can't. I can't tell you what the best strategy is against this. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, territory victory is back. The timer is on. Two minutes forty-five. Oh, look at that city. Yep. Oh wow. How did he get? Oh, he went for civic. Oh, four. he just. <laughs> oh my God. This is going overboard, really. So, Colo <sighs> Colosseum. <laughs> Colosseum for the that's like the only only time you would actually go for the Colosseum <laughs> for the extra territory. <laughs> Man, the problem for Dave though is he needs to get um you know thirty percent right or or more, and I feel like Jatin has played this perfectly because there's really not much more territory up for grabs, and pushing back that border by three tiles is not going to add the amount he needs or maybe. It, well, it might be close, but he's got to he's got to go for it. Obviously, it's it's GG otherwise. So, by the way, I want to point out something very important here. Dave was ready for gunpowder. He was aging to gunpowder, but I think he realized that the gunpowder won't really help him uh, in winning because he would actually need an army <laughs> to you know upgrade. Uh, yeah. But he doesn't really have any. Oh, look at this. Um, so the pyramid's finished. Where's Jatton going to build his final city here? And then Dave has gone for Civic 4 as well. Completely skipped his gunpowder. Where is his city getting built? Oh, look at that. He's sending four citizens down to the right here. And the timer has stopped. And he hasn't even got Colosseum finished yet. This might be... Dave might be on the comeback here. <laughs> Bro, but listen to me. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say though? I think Jatin, Jatin can go straight for. Look at the library of Jatin. That's all I wanted to say. Check out his library, please. Yeah. That's like Tetris stuff. He doesn't need science three. He can just go straight for gunpowder. Well, he does need his mill three still. Yeah. Look. But if look you, at this. Look at this stuff, man. If you see his um his tech, it's like he's giving the finger to Dave right now. <laughs> Can you see that in his library? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's called giving the middle finger strategy. Holy shit, this is um, pretty epic. Yeah, the timer did go back, but it's it's only for a split second. The Colosseum has finished, and he's got his border push back again. Oh, look at this! It's that city on the right hand side. He's got a massive amount of territory there. Actually, that Colosseum, I think it saved Dave right now. I'm serious. Yeah, I'm that serious. Yep. If Jatin got the Colosseum, imagine he had the resources for the Colosseum and he got it, he would have won this game. I'm fucking telling you. Yeah, you're probably right. He probably should have just just blasted for it. Just bought and sold whatever resources he needed to get that up and it would be GG. But look at this, he's building another castle on the right-hand side. And I think this might be enough to tilt it back. We'll be close. We'll be close, definitely. Yeah. So uh, Jat, uh, Dave is aging, but Jatin is getting his mill three, and he's gonna be aging pretty quickly after that as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously, ob obviously, Koreans don't have enough economic power to go for Colosseum. But yeah, the uh, thing is, it's just speculation, you know. But that castle, let's see if it will give him enough. Um. I think Jatin is forgetting something. He should go for maybe for the fortification upgrade in the castle. That will increase the border push slightly as well. Yeah, he hasn't got mill three yet. So once he gets that, he's got it now. He can research that one straight away. Well, this castle, oh, look at these citizens. They're in attrition. They're building this castle in enemy territory. But it looks like they should just get this castle up. And this could set the timer on again. Is it going to do it? Oh, no, it doesn't. It's. He needs man, that fortification, sucks. man. He needs that fortification. That's it's at sixty-four thirty-three. Uh, so oh, close, close. Fuck. Like, like, listen up. If Jatin has gems, if Jatin had gems, bro. <laughs> There's no gems, but if he had gems, if he did, yeah, it would be GG. If he had Colosseum, it would be GG right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just needs that slight little edge extra, you know. I mean, should he go for another civic here and try and build another city? <laughs> or he needs to go for a porcelain tower or something like that. What does porcelain tower do again? Increases... No, hang on. 
on one. Uh, apparently Tikai or something. Tikai oh, yeah. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, Temple of Tikai. Yeah, more that's... to the right. Increases oh, yeah, Temple effects by 50%. So basically... Oh, that's some that's some nice border push, uh, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But bro, 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 I think Jaden is just is just going going for the attack now. He's, he's like, fuck the territory victory. I'm, I'm going to win. <laughs> Look at all his talent he's got. It's like the whole building has just turned into Sim City. Like this whole game has turned into Sim City. And now they're like, okay, we actually got to fight each other again. So you can see that Dave's trying to run around, but these towers are just peppering his units. <laughs> oh man, it's, it's, it's nice for Jaden that I think he saved both sieges there. Uh, in, in, in the city. Yeah. I think you put them in that city there. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. That's good news. Yeah, he did. In terms of economy, guys, it's uh, actually the same. The only thing better for Dave is his uh, uh, knowledge income. It's 190 versus 133. And all the other things are pretty much safe. Yeah. But, um,. But um, hey, um, Dave doesn't have much army, so Jaden could could actually could actually attack successfully. I feel like he's got to he's got to stay true. He's got to go for Civic Five here and build that final, put that final dagger into Dave's heart here with the territory victory. <laughs> or actually, but like you said, if he just you know the old-fashioned way conquers one of Dave's uh -huh. city. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's... I was assuming Jaden would attack, you know, Erfurt or something or Leipzig, mm. but if you look closely, he's actually going for Munich, and getting one city will will just be enough to um, to get his territory victory back on tra track. Yeah. And yeah, that, that that city of Munich is quite exposed. Doesn't have any towers on the bottom there. Doesn't have much at all there. Yeah, I mean, if he can capture this pretty quick and then get Koreans to repair it, um, they can do a pretty good job. The biggest problem right now is that Dave is ready for enlightenment and he obviously has the operations already. Jaden still does not have any of those things. So uh, Jaden is quite quite a bit off from uh, from enlightenment. So, but I really hope I mean, I'm, I'm unbiased, but this will be so cool if you made it work. Um, I just hope this will be a close game regardless, yeah. Yeah, Let's I see mean... see what happens here. Jaden's playing for his tournament life here, so he has, to, right. he has to make this that work. That is actually true, man. Wow, he's going for such a play in, on, in the last game of his... Uh, that, that's just showing him some balls, man. Yeah. So, yeah. so this city looks like it should go down. I mean, how is... Dave gonna respond here. Surely he's got to take this threat seriously. He loses the city. He's he's well and truly tipped over that territory victory. So, what's Dave's response here? I thought he would have to uh, try and hold. Ooh, so city does go down, but the timer has not. Okay, so it's still neutral territory. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Assimilate. How much time? It's yeah. It's two minutes before it's assimilated. That's quite a, a lot of time. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. No, it'll take a while, but one thing, uh, it looks like he is doing that now. He's sending citizens down to repair that, and they don't repair as fast as they do if it was already, you know, his territory, but still, it it's quite quick, and that HP will start to add quite quickly there. Oh, it looks like... <sighs> yeah. <sighs> this could be it. Uh, what is, so what's Dave's response? Obviously, he's not going to sit back and just let, let himself lose the game. He's got about two to three minutes here to make something happen. Uh, he has four catapults ready. Yeah. And he has the age up, so this uh, is pretty good for Dave as well. He probably will capture a city at least. Uh, let's see. Jaden is ready for enlightenment as well. He just needs like 300 more knowledge and he's, he can click click up. Yeah, he does have a bigger army. So let's see. Will he take on the confrontation with Dave right away is the question. Or is he going to wait? I mean, on, honestly, if I was chatting right now, I'd just don't be aggressive at all. Just sit back, spend every single dollar to repair as long as you need to. Just hold out for the territory victory. <laughs> I don't know if that's a long term, a good long term strategy, but yeah, he's going to have the territory soon. He just needs to hold. 
Bro, that's all Jet needs right now is to push Dave back, and he does that. He kills some sieges there. Yeah. He's winning. He's winning this engagement. Yeah. Even though he has the age down, he he does have. Um, he had more army. So yeah. Yeah. Um. This is it. It's bloody. Anyone that's on Team Jatten here is thinking. Hashtag Team Jatten. Um, Jatten will be aging soon. He's almost ready to click up. In fact, he can click up. He just needs uh, 100 more food. Yeah. That city of Munich, tw 20 seconds left before Ooh. it's goddamn assimilated. That city is full HP now. Maybe get a tower there or whatever. And maybe we still get to see our territory victory. <laughs> That's if Dave doesn't GG first, because I feel like that's the only thing stopping a territory victory from happening here. But it, I do feel like Dave is regaining his footing here, because uh, Jatin's army, it was bigger, but it's suffered a lot yeah. while attacking. So, yeah, Jatin is, anyway, he's aging, and we need we need to upgrade our units if we're Jatin oh. and we want to. Look at that, Munich's already repaired to full health. All Jatin needs to do is basically right-click on this city with all of his citizens, and keep Incheon <laughs> with some HP. That's all he needs oh, to do. That, uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be hard though to keep that city. He was He's repairing it though, so Kore being Koreans helps right now. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, nice, nice, nice. He's almost aging. Almost aged. Does age up, so he's hit in line, and he's gonna be on an even footing now soon with his tech. He actually has a lot of units inside as well, so he's not that helpless as it seems. Yeah. Once those are upgraded, Ooh, if I was uh, Dave, I would be, I would be. Not in distress. Oh, by the way, by the way, look at this. This is a uh, 500 IQ play. Jatin has what? 500 IQ. Yeah. Jatin is a genius. He's what? pulling all his militia, so no matter what, he will keep the city and he will <laughs> let that timer go down. Wow. Oh. No what? matter what, he's gonna keep this city with, with the help of the militia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows. He holds this. He's won the game. Dave knows that he doesn't take this city. He's lost the game. Therefore, what is the point of keeping these citizens working elsewhere? Man, is... this is the IQ play. Dave doesn't have the IQ to know he, he needs to go Minutemen. No offense. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Dave would definitely be able to... <laughs> to think of that, I'm but, kidding, obviously, but, but it's just crazy, man. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, oh my god, look at this. Yeah. So this is a desperate attack on Day John, but I think, uh, yeah, Jaden will 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 <laughs> flank him probably. <laughs> sorry, I'm slightly ahead. I'm slightly ahead. Sorry. No, no, but, no. Uh, I was seeing in the chat. Jaden just said this will be a fun cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, he's going for oh, this. Oh man, look at that. Jatin has more army and that militia is gonna help out as well. Oh. So he's definitely gonna keep that city in his control, man. Yeah. No, this this is gonna come down to the time. Look, Dave is doing the right move here. I think he's going for the top city, but... Oh, he's gonna force a big engagement oh, here, Jatin. Oh, damn, bro. Oh, Damn. The spies aren't even getting only... used. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Only, only one scout, and it's not upgraded. So those spies are still, uh, you know, uh, a good option there for Jaden. Yeah. Man, I would have PTSD if I was Dave, losing twice to a territory victory. Yeah. I mean, every time you close your eyes at night after a game like this, Man, you can just see that. A dirty territory victory, <laughs> Jesus! Holy fuck, man! <laughs> oh my god! What Shit, just dude. happened? <laughs> Shit! Did we just see territory victory in the grand finals? Oh my god! As Koreans versus Germans, what were we saying at the beginning? I can't remember. Hopefully, no one will listen to what we said about how, you know. Basically insinuating that Jatin's going to throw the game. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Damn, bro, what a game. I that, need to uh, regain my senses. That was a serious hustle right there with tournament on the line. Um, it was just like, yeah, the, the territory just became more and more red as the game went on. <laughs> and, uh, 
Sooner, sooner rather than later, it was just this small kind of enclave of Germany versus this massive... It was basically like Russia-esque, what Chatton did there. So... Oh, wow, just wow. And uh, Chatton just playing it on the edge, always living life on the edge there. Just slightly, you know, being, you know, slightly having more territory, just slightly surviving, even be, though being an age down. I guess, yeah, Dave had a chance when he got enlightenment, but he didn't have enough army. That was a problem. But the time was against him, so he was like, I need to attack now. And Jet, and that was nice decis decisiveness to um, attack while, you know, even though he was an age down. That's what won him the game, basically. Yeah. I mean, good thing you didn't listen to me. I was thinking, retreat, retreat, <laughs> go back. <laughs> yeah, if you listen to you, man. So. <laughs> it's a bit of trouble, yeah. No, sometimes you just got to strike when the iron's hot. So you just went for it. And yeah, like and you I, said. I, I, yeah. Yeah. By the way, do, do the Koreans get the free militia upgrade? Probably not. Or do they? I think they do. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, they, they get the minute man. Yeah, so that's actually, damn. Yeah, Korea gets quite a buff when they get enlightenment if, if you know. Yeah, if you have to d defend or something, you can just instantly pop that mi those Minutemen. It's kind of nice. Yeah, no, for sure. It's one of those things that, yeah, in Nomad games, I guess, yeah, it's pretty rare to get to age five. But in standard, I think, yeah, Minutemen's like probably one of the few reasons um, that you could go for this kind of crazy strategy <laughs> where the game actually gets that far. And um, how's, the, how's the goal to build pyramids on the front lines there too? I thought that was a little bit risky. But it didn't really matter <laughs> in the scale. Worked out in the end. Uh, I, yeah. I like that Colosseum play, though, by Dave. That was nice reactiveness. Like, you, you need to actually have good game knowledge to remember that the Colosseum gives you extra, you know, territory. Not every player would, would during the tournament, think about building the Colosseum. So, yeah, Dave didn't panic, still rational, went for the Colosseum. Helped him, help, helped him out as well, so... Maybe, um, yeah, it's hard to think of this too in the heat of the battle, but maybe Templar Tikal could have been another wonder he could have built oh, maybe yeah. if he's yeah, desperate. That, that's, that shit is hella expensive though. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, uh, and let's not forget, I guess, Dave did have a pretty raw end of the rares as well. I mean, Copper was about as good as it got. So that all, yeah. all factored in, but no, very well played by Jatton. So what an amazing game. But um, yeah. <sighs> All right. Yeah, let's, let's uh, take a small, small break, maybe. Yeah, let's take a short break, um, and then yeah, we'll be right back soon, guys. So don't go anywhere. That was um, yeah, evening up to what's the scoreboard now? So we got uh, yeah, four games to Dave, three games to Jatton. I'll update that right now. So guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Yeah.
right, guys. We are in game number seven of this best of nine series. The score is now four games to Dave, three games to Jutton after a crazy territory victory. All right, let's get this replay started. Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's go. So here we have, let's have a quick look at the nations first of all. We have Jatton has picked Indians here, while Dave has gone for French. So I think, I feel like this might be where Jatton starts to make a bit of a late comeback because he's already used up his, you know, so-called weaker nations in, you know, Americans yeah. and Koreans and these uh, crazy plays he's done. And so... Like, wait. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, sorry. I'm and, too excited. And Egyptians too. So, I mean, I'm not saying French. French are by no means weak, but I guess they're not a top, top, top tier um, nation. They can kind of be hit or miss depending on the player and depending on what kind of where the cities get built and et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, what do you, what do you reckon is going to happen? Uh, again, I don't know. <laughs> nah. Uh, <laughs> uh, po po politicians answer right there. <laughs> Um, well, politicians would say that they know everything, <laughs> but um, true, true. I don't know. Like, obviously, I think you're right about your I think, thing you said. Like, Indians is so such a strong nation, so I think Jaden can finally have a break, uh, in in some sense. French is dangerous in the fact that you know when they get to age two and stuff, the danger is if French uh, start to successfully raid you with uh, like a small army, and if if things go wrong and you give the French player the momentum, you're never coming back really, even if you're Indians. But uh, the thing is, yeah, Indians is better. And for Indians, you want to get to gunpowder. You want to have a nice eco. You want to be more defensive. You want to later raid with those elephants if you make it there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, anyway, also I want to get back to, yeah, Jatin used Americans, Jatin used Koreans. Well, I think Dave went for top-notch nations every time. So, Jatin potentially, if he wins this game, it's going to be 4-4. Four, four. Let's just speculate for a second. Yeah. And then for the last game, I think, I don't know if Dave has any nice nations left. I think he took French because he probably doesn't have any tier 1 nations left. While I think Jatin still has Japanese. Yeah, he still has Japanese, Germans. Yeah. Um... If you wanted Germans, yeah, and probably a slew of others. Turks still in the game. Yeah, Turks. Turks is still yeah, an option okay. too. So for both, of them, I think. yeah. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, let's just see what happens. We want to go over the rares real quick. Yeah, let's have a, let's have a quick look. So um, at the top here for Jatin, we've got Amber, which is nice and close to his market. He's got gems in a very defendable position. So. That's a nice little start there. Silver on the perimeter of his base and die right in the corner. Um, and then, uh, yeah. What do you think? I just wanted to say, like, the every rare on the side of Jatin is a wealth rare. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of funny. That's, I don't know. That's just kind of funny. That's kind of insane though, right? Like Even it's... even Spice. Even Spice is un, 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 under, undirectly a wealth rare, you know? So every every rare on on the Jatin's half of the map is wealth related at least. So it's kind of funny. And I mean, as Indians too, if he gets spice, it's gonna only boost his already high caravan income. So that's a yep. nice little rare to have. Yeah, let's have a quick look. So on the other side, we've got Dave has got cotton, wine, both not exactly in um, near his base. And then Bison at the bottom. I'm not going to lie. I feel like, uh, yeah, Jatin has the better nation slightly and also better rares as well. So yep. <clears throat> no pressure. But I agree. He's He's got all the tools from the Ron Gods to uh, to make a good crack at this game. So it's, um, Yeah. I think right now mainly our eyes should be probably on Dave because it's all about his decision to either go, will he go, uh, super fast for the despot with some raids or will he try to get his economy up slightly first and then go for the same raids or what is he gonna do um but uh let's see yeah I i'm slightly ahead so i i saw i saw he's going for a barracks but 
Yeah. Yeah, it looks like, um, well, Jatin's going to a really fast stable and very forward stable as well. So clearly, uh, I think it's a fair assumption to say an elephant will be popping out of that stable very shortly. That's uh, quite reasonable. Yeah, and um, meanwhile, Dave's building his racks behind his city um, before he gets aged age two so perhaps oh he has scouted that that stable so yeah, yeah clearly um a nice reaction there from dave yeah dave again with the cheeky stuff he's using the die in the left corner we should get used to it ladies and gentlemen yeah <laughs> it's like <laughs> Dave's strategy has been unearthed, and anyone who plays him in the future is just going to check every single corner around. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm sending something in the corner if yeah. I play against Dave. Yeah. But I feel like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, the, so the natural advantage of French here, I guess, is whether Dave wants to pump out that despot and start to get some heavy raids going with those heavy calves. Although... Yeah, I do think mm -hmm. that's naturally what Jatin's going to expect too. So even if he does go through that strategy, which is perfectly fine and legitimate, I feel like it's it's chore it's telegraphed quite obviously when you are playing against French. So I think Jatin will probably be prepared with uh, towers where he needs to defend. Oof, look at this elephant. Yeah, some annoying elephants, and now he's gonna go back. Nice, nice stuff. Um, let's see. Yeah, good for Jaden. He towered that gems in the corner, and it covers that woodcutter's cap. That's quite nice. Yeah, it is a nice tower, and you can see both players using die now. And their merchants are just happily coexisting together. Yep. I suspect, mm, I suspect okay. that may not last though. So uh, now, yeah, two hoplites for Dave in the city and the despot coming up. Maybe we will see what we talked about earlier. Let's check out the ruins actually. Um, oh, the ruins are perfectly balanced. Yeah, I was going to say that that's probably something that's quite important, but 450, 450 across both. And it did seem like they were picking him up at a fairly even pace in the beginning. So, as a, yeah, again, as a neutral, it's great to see. Obviously going to lead to a more exciting close game. Yep. Uh, I like the city by Jadon. It's, it's not too much forward. It's still, still defensive. So you don't wanna you don't wanna get too close to a French player with despot. Yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah, really good um, discipline there to not take that territory when he could have, because he's got plenty of space there to, you know, build another wood camp if he needs it. But I think if you're Jatin here, you just want to drag this game out to gunpowder, probably, and just outboom yeah. outboom the French player. That would be the way. That's for sure. I would I would tackle this and yeah just don't die in the meantime from that crazy uh, uh but, but by the way check out that elephant man oh yeah that's a nice flank yeah all those farmers are are inside and uh, that's nice I mean that's so perfect against French is if you raid them with those elephants they have to commit a whole army to defend from the raids yeah which means that yeah the french player won't be able to raid you and yeah and you can't really go senator because then you lose your healing benefits so yeah so that's yeah mm -hmm. it's a good move yeah he's pretty much got um his light horse and there's it's sad though that sorry yeah they're so they're so tanky that he can just run it away and um <laughs> Oh, did you see that corpse? Oh, he, yeah, he did. He did die there. He probably got a little bit. That's it. Look at how cute he is. I mean, it's dead though. But... It's a skeleton now, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was yeah. Um, an elephant graveyard right there. Ooh, that second elephant is getting chased down. It would be sucky if he lost it. I hope he. he I think he's going to lose it. 
it's a whole army against one. Oh, I'm slightly ahead, but yeah, you see. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. So Dave's, Dave's third city is going down. I don't mind the location for Dave. It's not too exposed. Although, yeah, I guess he probably didn't have enough space to build it straight in front either. So he's going to get a fair bit of map control and territory from that location. But, uh, but surprisingly, no trees in the middle. So yeah, trees won't be an issue. He's French, so it should be fine. Yeah, that, that city is pretty useless in terms of economy, no mountains, no nothing, but it's a good city in terms of raiding potential and it's a good angle. You can reach Delhi easily, you can listen, uh, reach Indore easily for some raids. Yeah, absolutely agreed. Looks like Dave is pushing up here with his healing despot army here. Chatton will need to be careful. Um, he is bringing forward his senator, which uh, he has gone. So Jatin going for the full traditional Indian boom here, going for a 200-200 eco. Nice defense by Jatin with minimal investment. Yeah, that was good. I mean, I feel like J Jatin's probably pretty comfortable with this situation that he's in now i mean the game plan seems to be quite clear sit back boom up don't die and um and then just wait till age four i'm not gonna lie losing those two elephants was um was not good at all because he could have used those elephants in medieval age to raid again but now yeah he that was quite a hefty price he paid he should have he should have tried to you know save them but all good still. He still has a he has die. He's not using marbles. Why? That's just pl plus ten wealth. He's not getting. Um, amber? Is that what you mean? Amber. Sorry. Amber. Yeah. 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 yeah true. Miss Cap. Yeah. Maybe he's uh, forgotten about it. Yep. I don't know. I think I think Dave is doing pretty well. It's not so obvious that Jatin has this in the bag. Not at all. Yeah, actually, you're right. His eco is not not as strong as um, it could be, and I mean, it will start to tick over once he gets those, you know, uh, granaries and lumber camps down. But for the time being, I'd say French are at their most dangerous, potentially with a big age three push, and then again once they get monarch, that's also can help them a lot. But the problem is. It, once they get to age four, they're up against the Indian, you know, gun mahouts. In, in which case, even with the healing of the monarch, I, I still feel like Indians have got the edge there. Ooh. Yeah, both players are equal in library, Ooh. in terms of library. And no. Yeah. Oh no, he lost the elephant. Wow. Another elephant went down, and that's the third elephant this game. And despite whatever economic damage they might have done, you just got to think that if he had them saved up, it would be better to keep them alive for a you know mid to late game army. Yeah, I don't know. Losing three elephants, that's like I don't know. I don't want to do the maths, but uh, <laughs> it's like probably that's like at least three hundred food and close to 200 wealth at least at 350 wood food and like 200 wealth maybe that he lost there let's see looks like dave is building siege so this does seem to be implying that there's going to be some kind of medieval attack here at the very least some kind of pressure i just don't know what angle he's going to take here whether he's going to try and snipe these barracks, but it seems like Jatin's got a nice setup. He's, you know, very well protected. He's got two towers yeah. there, almost like, like this is Lord of the Rings, and it's like the the outposts there. It's like <laughs> you shall not pass. I'm thinking. Hey, yeah, uh, we have some we have some requests in the chat from the viewers. Uh, oh, 
They yeah. want to they wanna get that little bar there on top. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. I think I might have um, misclicked that before. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's all good. Sorry, guys. But yeah, um, you can see that basically looks like Dave's got age three. Still needs science too. Meanwhile, Jatin's pretty much the same, but he's already got science too. So fairly even footing here and knowledge is fairly similar as well. I'm uh, not gonna lie, I think Dave might um, win this because he has a bigger army, he has a French healing. Yeah. Only chance for uh, Jatin is, I mean, he has one elephant in the back there going for a raid. But um, yeah, it's already half HP, so nah, it's not working out. Yeah, I mean, I think Jan has a superb economy, so I, I feel like he hasn't reached that level of absolute danger yet, but he needs to be careful for sure, because like you said, French armies that are healing in your territory are just such a pain to deal with. And um, yeah, he's probably gonna need some more elephants, heavy horses, white horses, whatever it might take, because those eight crossbowmen are like the core of his army here. Yeah. And the crossbows are so powerful if they have the right support. Especially under healing, they can just stand in enemy territory, stand their ground and just, yeah, fight anything that comes their way. Yeah. Ah, yeah, it's looking looking uh, tough for a jet and his economy is doing well. He has a two, one, 190 food income, 150 wood, 60 metal, 140 wealth, but Dave is maxed out basically on his equal, only his metal is slightly low, but he has a nice wealth income, so he has everything he needs really for for the victory. Yeah. Just anything you would need as a French guy. Yeah, I mean, this is the time to attack. Oh, I think Jatin might be overextending a bit here. He's got to be careful. He can try and delay this defense until... Oof, another elephant lost. Yeah. Ooh, he needs to. He needs to hurt the critical mass of this French army, but at the moment, oh man, this this micro is not suboptimal. He he just lost his archers for nothing. Why isn't he pulling them back inside? Yeah, I think he he messed up a little there. Oh, he's going Ooh, for that... the the despot. He tried to kill the despot there. He went down to 18 HP, but uh, Dave just got away in time, and that could have been a massive deal, but. He lost the elephant instead for no gain. He could still snipe it though, if he if he charges it. He needs to kill that despot ASAP. 18 wow, HP. Oh yeah, I think this is this is not very good. Three elephants, maybe if if Jaden can kill those heavy chevaliers and those pikemen, he can finally, you know. Yeah, city go, city goes down. There's no, no militia either. Where's the militia at? Oh, he's bringing the militia now. City's, city's come back again, but yeah, that that despot is on 6 HP. Nice micro by Dave, he's literally putting his despot on the edge of his own life. That's supply wagon as well, Dave. Damn, great, bro. Great job, and yeah, this is um, pikemen versus militia. Not good, not a good trade. Damn it, bro. Yeah. I mean, I mean, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he, Team Dave right now is going absolutely wild because he is crushing the city and he has basically punched Jatin in the face here and Jatin is wounded. <laughs> He's not giving up, but this is... Um, yeah. yeah. Look at this spam too, like just non-stop spam from these production buildings just on the edge. And his eco is blinking except for, for metal. He recaptures that city and that is yeah basically one hand on the trophy of elo legends here <laughs> let's see if let's see if Jatin can pull another rabbit out of the hat because he needs to do something crazy i mean a militia pull is not going to be enough here he needs to do something the oh there we go he's putting the taunts in the end this is getting close i think this might be oh man oh <laughs> are you are you uh, thinking are you thinking this might be the end of a uh, best of nine final playoff match? That is officially yeah. This is the end, man.
That's a GG, guys. We have the winner. We have the winner of the Elo Legends tournament. It's gonna be Dave. Dave is such a great player, man. Congratulations, yeah, like, Dave. Yeah, yeah. very strong play from both players, but yeah, yeah. No, that was yeah, incredibly strong from both. Well played, both. But yeah, we have to salute the man, the myth, the legend, the the inaugural Elo Legends champion and undisputed one v one standard on Sahara, grand champion of the world, <laughs> Dave. Yeah, he is the. Yep. Dangerous. Uh, dangerous. Dave, yeah. Formal, Dave dangerous. Dave, <laughs> aka formerly known as <laughs> Dangerous Dave, has won the title. So very well played. Um, that was that was a mean French attack right there. I think Jatton was on the right path, but yeah, it just seemed like you, you picked it early there, bro. It's like when he started to make that incursion, and I think he just did everything right. And and to be honest, probably some um, like you said, you know, a few mismanagement of the of the army there, Miss Micros of the army by Jatton was all he needed. And had he had those three elephants saved from earlier in the game, maybe that would have made all the difference. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it would have definitely because I don't know. Yeah, not only do you lose the elephants for later use, you just lose uh, all the fucking resources you poured into them because they're they're big animals. They eat a lot. Yeah, they're very expensive. Uh, um, so yeah, saving those would have helped. He should have just, you know, teased Dave with those elephants, like, here and there, just to make Dave be on his toes, you know? But, of course, it's easy to talk when you're not in the game playing. Yeah. But that's why we're here also. So, yeah. No, exactly right. And, um, yeah, it, obviously, massive congrats to Dave. And, I guess, commiserations, but also a big congratulations to Jatton as well for uh, taking this series all the way to a seventh game. Obviously, uh, Dave will be the winner here. With five games to three, I'll quickly uh, update that scoreboard so that it's official. But that is your scoreboard right there. He does take it, and it would have potentially, if, if Jatton had won this, it would have come down to a final game, which would have been crazy. But um, it wasn't to be for Jatton, but it was definitely uh, some solid, solid play by Dave. So congratulations. I'm, I'm more than happy with the 5-4. I'm, I'm satisfied. Yeah, I mean... They gave us what we wanted. Yeah, they, they gave the people what we wanted. We got to see... 5-3, actually. Yeah. yeah. We got to see the Red Fort. We got to see the um, uh, the, the Territory victory. <laughs> just, just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was awesome. Oh, man, it was. And honestly, this could have gone either way, man. Jadon could have won this as well. No doubt. No doubt he could have been the champion as well. But yeah. he's not. And Dave... Uh, he got it, man. Dave got it. Yep. Um, yeah. By the way, thanks guys for the support and stuff. It's really cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for everyone tuning in. We had, um, I think, I don't know the exact peak, but I saw it was well over fifty people at one point. And yeah, considering that this hasn't exactly been the most straightforward from a technical perspective, there were a few uh, hiccups at the beginning, but we got through them, and you guys stayed patient. So we appreciate you hanging around, and um, especially for all of you who may have watched from the very beginning through to, yeah, game number, end of game seven. So. Thanks again, guys. And uh, obviously, we appreciate your support and your love of Rise of Nations. So don't have a chance. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> By the way, do we have any... Do, should we should we try to get a hold of the champions? Yeah, we, and the... we definitely should because, yeah, we haven't had, I don't think, any post-match, uh, post-game interviews from the ELO legends so far. So what a good opportune time to get the two guys who happen to play this grand final who are, um, you know, casting a lot yeah. themselves. So let's, let's try to get them here and just hang out together, talk about the game, talk about the matches. and Yeah. So, yeah. So guys, just think of this like, you know, we've just watched the, um, the grand final like in any sports and now we're going to put the ad break on for a second and then we'll come back and we'll just uh, hopefully chill out a bit with, with Jat and yeah, just, yeah. Uh, just vibe. Let's chill, guys vibe a bit and uh, hang out if anyone wants to maybe we can uh, set up a discord we'll see but yeah yeah so um guys don't go anywhere we'll be right back in a couple of minutes all right see you guys
right, guys. What's up? We are back. And with a bit of, uh, yeah, post-match vibing and a uh, bit of chat with the man himself, Jatin. How you doing? Hey, Kron. I'm good. Thank you, guys, for the cast. It was very enjoyable. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks. For, thanks for the games. And uh, we only end <laughs> this year, so <laughs> we're, we're glad you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, we uh, Dave is, is going to come over. He's just not here yet, but yeah, he will come, he said. So. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah, guys, by the way, if you have any questions, maybe you can just uh, post in the chat. We'll try to get to you. Uh, yeah, and, and do we have actually any questions? I mean, obviously we do. Yeah. And Let's see. I've got a few that I can start this out with. But guys, if you can please... Um... Yeah, start putting your questions in the chat and we'll ask them on your behalf or uh, after we've got through the initial questions, um, yeah, guys, feel free to jump on the Discord yourself as self. long as you behave yourselves. And, behave yourselves. Um, yeah, you can ask your own questions. Yeah, you can ask your own questions. We got a bit of uh, feedback. We got a bit of... Uh, it's, uh, Dave, it's, uh, is here, but Dave is here, but every time we talk, we can, we, talk we can hear ourselves. Can you put on, can maybe, you put on maybe headphones or something, Dave? Possible? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's Dave's... Um, Dave's audio is <laughs> all good. He'll fix that up. So, um, oh, I guess we, if Dave just joined, yeah, we should probably just wait for. Give him yeah, a let's second. wait for Dave uh, real quick. Yeah. Hey, I saw a question from Arash, but Arash, can you be a bit more specific with your question? You can't just say what happened with Indians. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a very open-ended question. Hey, it's it's fine now, Dave. We can't hear ourselves. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Cool. By the way, guys, is the audio fine for everybody? Is every is everybody on the volume? Is it decent for everybody? Is someone too loud? Maybe or not loud enough? Yeah, it does, um, it does say the audio is not even, but I think it's okay. <laughs> wow. All right. Anyway, let's. I, I, I'm kind of wondering if you're ready for this. <laughs> you, you don't feel ready? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, we're ready. I'm ready. I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's, so let's kick it off. Um, can, I'll ask the first question to get us started. So, so yeah. um, Jatin and Dave, congratulations to you both. Awesome series. Really enjoyed uh, casting it, and I think everyone enjoyed watching it. Just curious if you, each of you could give us, say, uh, just a... a a 30 second say rundown of what was your strategy coming into the grand final with you know your nations and just a very high level overview like what what was your main kind of focus coming in yeah what, what was your mindset also i'll let dave start all right uh well i had a severe lack of practice in the last couple of weeks so it was a bit tough for me because I had to rely on my experience and intuition going into this set. And I felt like I was at a disadvantage with the strategies planned. But I think it went all right overall. I didn't expect some of the strategies, but I think I reacted to well. Uh, I think I reacted well to most of them. By the way, I planned to like uh, do an analysis of each game because I went over them in my head so if you're interested in that i could do that soon but uh if you don't want the interview to drag on too long then i might skip that i uh, think that would be cool i i think uh Brown, you had some specific questions maybe yeah yeah let, let's come back. um and so um yeah yeah uh Jatin, your voice might be a little bit low just so you know so if you can turn it up a little bit i think mine's a bit low too so sorry guys i'm trying to fix that but um Jat is it better now that's a bit better, man. Yeah, just make sure you talk as loud as you can. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, how about yourself coming into this? Did you have any bags of tricks up your sleeve? Like, for example, that Korean one, Russians. Was there anything that you came in thinking, this is what I'm going to do? Oh, yeah. So in the first game, I was expecting Dave to go Persians. And Romans counter Persians very well. I had a very specific strategy to use that. But uh, Dave surprised me with that Greek pick and i wasn't ready for all those hc raids i think if i had a stable i could have defended but that was my bad i shouldn't have lost with romans 
Yeah, you had salt as well. So, um, I don't know. They've just, <laughs> but didn't Dave have more ruins as well in that first game? I think he did. That helped him out a bit. Yeah, not... slightly more ruins, but I don't think that was a big deal. Like it did help, but 150 more is is fine. It's, it's yeah manageable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um and Dave, what do you think was the key to you winning as Greeks in that first game? Uh, I always think that Greeks are an underappreciated nation overall. I actually didn't uh, want to face Romans in the first game. I was hoping for uh, like a boomer nation pick there because Greeks can be really strong in H3 and that was my plan to, to kill an H3 basically and uh, use a somewhat weak nation to do it so I will have better picks for later. But it worked out quite well still. I, I would prefer to have Romans in that matchup, but some more ruins and uh, the fact that Jatin's raid didn't do as much helped me a lot and uh, I could leverage that into a bigger advantage in H2 with the raids, continuing that with H3 in the raids. So, yeah, I think uh, everything went right for me in that match. When, when I saw that city, that, that I could have killed that city, in the in the age one, yeah. Now I I see that in hindsight that could have got me the game, but <laughs> bad maneuver there to get that hoplite on the other side of the wood. Yeah. 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 You can't you can't be too upset. Obviously, <laughs> it proves that you're <laughs> an honest player if nothing else. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but yeah, that would have been nice to to pop that city. So, um, can you guys remind me what was the second game again? What was the matchup? The War of the Incas. Oh, the War of the Incas. Yes, that was an epic, epic battle. So yeah, that was, that was your uh, game to shine, Jatin. So, what was your was your strategy to do that regardless of what nation you played against, or was that just something you came up with on the fly? So that strategy works very well against nations that are not fast or non-cavalry nations. Uh, like I, I saw Naoto do that against Dave and Naoto was very unlucky with that matchup. I think he would win if Dave wasn't Lakota because Lakota can spam just so many light cavalry. Mm -hmm. And so that didn't work that time. This time I know Lakota is banned mm -hmm. and, and Mongols, Mongols pro probably is another nation that can take care of that kind of raid and they're also banned. So this had to work. This Inca start is, is very good. Believe me, you guys should try it. Yeah, we'll have to. Um, and Dave, were you like taken off guard by how aggressive Jatin was, given that it was a mirror matchup? Uh, yeah, at first it surprised me the fast uptime because it felt like I had pretty good ruins, but it was actually equal in the end, I believe. Yeah, I'm not sure. So, yeah, it was a bit surprising, but uh, I still think I could have handled it. I didn't have the proper reaction there. I rushed out the barracks and ancient age barrack units can never deal with mass heavy cavalry, so that was a mistake. I should have opted for faster H2 and go for my own stable to counter. I think that would, would have been a much better way of dealing with the raid. But yeah, like Jatin said in this uh, Inca mirror, this strategy can be very powerful because the opponent is not going to raid you because he's also very slow. And uh, if you gain the upper hand this way, it's going to be great for you. Yeah, nice. And um, game mode three, that was, what was the matchup for that one? I just want to make sure I'm getting the Romans, order. Americans. Romans and Americans. Ah, yes. Roman, the, the lovely Romans versus Americans. <laughs> so um, th that one's going to go to you, Jad, I think. Um, yeah, was that a pre-planned strategy? Forbidden City every time? Um, and... So that strategy was my India killer. That's an India killer strategy. <laughs> it works really well against Indians. I have tested that. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I was expecting Dave to go with Indians, but no, that Roman screwed me up. And also the ruin difference that also hurt me pretty badly. Yeah. 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 But <laughs> man, I think you had a you had a good chance. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you you went for. I think if you just spam archers, you could have held. Yeah, maybe you guys. Yeah. You guys missed something. You know, uh, Dave had a castle 
in the in front. You guys missed that yeah. during the stream. Yeah, that was a very tilting uh, accident there. So I had a, oh. I had my third city up, right? And I was planning to place a castle even more forward to push Jetting's territory back. Yeah. And there was a cataphract sitting right next to my castle. I placed the castle down and the cataphract instantly hit my castle and denied it. Oh, so you lost the resources. Yep. Damn. So that yeah, was a so... that was a huge that was yeah. a huge blow to my uh, plans because not only did I lose my forward position like that. I also lost the invested resources, so I couldn't keep up with the military early on. Yeah, and that's... seeing how Jetin had, uh, I think it was sugar and horses, I didn't like my chances very much if the game goes to H4. So I had to play it perfectly for the rest of the game and finish it like in H3 or something, which worked out pretty well because uh, I attacked the second city and there was a lot of eco there. So even with the faster age up, I think the game was pretty much over at that point. Yeah, right. I had to protect that city. If I didn't lose it, maybe I would have a good chance because free monarch and all that eco, it goes very well with Americans. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So well, what happened after that? So the next game, game number four, what was the matchup for that one again? Persian Civil War? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Persian Civil War. Wow. Um, yeah, with the with the fast third city by Dave mm -hmm. there. Yeah, 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 that was yeah. So the, yeah, I that think... game, I felt I had the better rares, but that not having wood, that was the that was the end for me. Couldn't secure wood, yeah. nothing on the sides, and I needed that center more than Dave because Dave did have some plus five patches in his territory. Yeah, was that was it um, to watch that game back and? see that you could have placed your city earlier, you know, with the benefit of hindsight. Yeah, I should have. I think I think I didn't expect uh, I should be fast doing fast shift. Also, my third city, if I place the third city near the wood camp, the other wood camp, that could work too. But I was trying to go for the center and, and yeah, it just didn't work out. But I yeah, very that's... well played by Dave, that one, with the spot. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, Dave. Out. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. He, 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 I don't know. I, I think you, you go for medieval pushes a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't usually like top standard players. I feel like usually go for gunpowder and in medieval they raid. But um, I don't know. Well, what's your reasoning for going heavy medieval? Is it nation specific or feel like you have an advantage already? You can use it to attack in medieval. So most, mo many of these games went like this. Jatin is trying to get to h4, but I see an opportunity to either strike between two cities or just uh, put the real damage in h3, mm -hmm. like in the American versus Romans game, right? Yep. So it makes sense to go for death spot and uh, do the damage that you need. And the, yep. in this game, that the Persian's mirror was the same thing. Well, not the same thing, but similar. I see that uh, Jetin is trying to get his third city up in the center, and he he does finish it, but the caravan route is super exposed there, so he needs to have constant military presence in between those two cities, otherwise he's going to lose a ton of eco, so if he booms, then he needs to camp there with his whole army, basically, and even yeah. then it might not be enough. Yeah. So it, it basically, this, is a, this game was a perfect example of how one decision can completely lose you the game. Because if Jetin built to the side where there was a plus five wood, I think he would have been fine. That's yeah, true. Yeah, so that was that was Persians versus Persians Civil War. Um, so that was game number four. And then game number five was uh, Egypt. At, uh... Is that? Yeah. Egypt Civil War. Yeah, I think so. Or was the third, was the Aztecs games? Was the Aztec games? No, no, that was sixth that. game. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it was Egypt. So Egypt versus Egypt. Yeah, that was that was a pretty crazy game. And another civil war. First of all, we had three civil wars in this tournament. That is very unusual for me. Like I know a lot of people say it was rigged. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. That was so fun. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. what was like? When you guys saw the game screen loading and you're both Egypt, like immediately, were you thinking like, oh, 
a chariot's not as good anymore because camels are <laughs> kind of fast. It's kind of a weird dynamic where you don't really practice those kind of situations. I was actually, actually laughing out loud because it was my like the third mirror in six games or five. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was expecting Dave to go for Wonders Boom, but then that spot that was surprising for me. I also actually felt better that he was going the spot because I think it's very easy to defend with Egypt. The the chariots, those camels, they're perfect defending units. Yeah, I think I just didn't play well that game. My overall decisions were not on spot. Um, like my initial plan with the nation pick was to perhaps counter Indians. Because Indians uh, have the elephants, and uh, my chariots and Mamluks have bonus damage against them. So, like, I still would prefer Indians in that matchup, but Egypt could beat them. I was surprised to see the mirror matchup, but uh, then I went for this risky strategy of going for fast age without civic and trying to go for the raids. But I think I got two villager kills and f forced the caravan to garrison, but. It was not quite enough, especially because we were both racing for diamonds in the center. And that was crucial because I didn't have the military to hold that area at the time. So after losing that, I'm basically up against Egypt with slightly better eco and sugar, diamonds, and I think it was something else as well. Salt, maybe? Not yeah. sure. Salt in the corner. So I didn't like my chances. I went for H2 raid with a lot of investment, which... I gotta give credit to Jettin, he defended that perfectly. I barely got any damage in and lost a lot of units there, so it was... Basically, I was very much behind at that point. So I had to go for the attack there, but uh, Red Fort kind of screwed my plans over in that regard. <laughs> yeah, super yeah. rares. Like, super rares for me that game. Sugar, salt, that, that was perfect setup for me. Yeah, what... So with the Red Fort, um, it did feel like Dave had a good chance of capturing that city and then the Red Fort finished and there was just no chance it was ever going down. I, I think I actually had a chance of stopping that because I saw it at like 30%, but I didn't move my catapults to siege it down. So I, oh, that was another so you would mistake. you have to come when... from the other way to siege that because I have a, cat, I have a full HP city, I have a tower behind uh, in front. So if you had to siege that, you would have to come from the other side. That would not be possible. I, I, I remember that I think it sh should still be possible because the tower was a bit too close to the port. Maybe I'm not sure. But yeah, I definitely should have tried another angle because that was just not going to happen. Yeah. Red Fort is... So a lot of people don't see this, but the Red Fort has a ability about healing your units. So if you put them it's inside... Five times as fast, yeah. Yeah, within three or four seconds you have fully healed units so you, you could be constantly taking engagement and just if you are quick on your feet you keep garrisoning almost dead units and you bring them back to dead they, it's a perfect <laughs> wonder for your backup there and on top of that you get the free tactics free operations and in h7 you get the other free upgrades so it, it's just perfect for defense perfect for going military for you have an instant operation it's like the roman power given to you with red yeah. fort mm -hmm. And it costs about the same as a real fort, except you have to pay two more, 200 more wealth with the red fort. Yeah, it actually pays back after those three upgrades almost. Yeah. And it's the, it's a, such a big defense. Nobody even tries to radio around that. <laughs> yeah, so great. Yeah, that, that was awesome. So then the next game was, I think it was the Aztecs versus uh japs japs yeah mm -hmm. which was quite an interesting game i feel like that city placement again by Jatton uh was a big... yeah that's one game i have biggest regrets about yeah. if i could undo one of these games that would be it that's yeah. changing that city because i had a huge lead early on i had the army power i had better knowledge everything was in my favor and then my caravans keep getting sniped there and i was very pissed off like that 20 wealth from diamonds was not worth <laughs> losing all that wealth income continuously. Yeah, okay. So the, the reason you built the city was to try and cover that diamonds a bit closer. But So there were two reasons. One was the diamond, but other thing is that Japanese, they are. it's risky to build very close to Japanese because they can come, come at you with three or four heavy infantry and a lot of militia and hard to defend that. 
So I was trying to stay behind. But I think if I was uh, if I build that city even a little more behind, then the caravan route would go from behind the mountain, and I would be safer with the diamonds because I didn't really want the the wood camp in the center. I had enough wood, everything. Yeah, yeah. I I should have won that game. That's the one regret I will have for the next few days. For the next ten years. <laughs> yes, <laughs> until the next Elo Legends is out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll just create a new tournament tomorrow. And, um, we'll, we'll, we'll wipe the slate clean. Um, Dave, did you have any comments on on that game in particular as well? Aztecs versus... Um, sorry, what was it again? Japanese. Uh, Japanese. Yeah, Japs. I think that yeah. that game might have been the most interesting one overall. It was so back and forth the whole time. And... Yeah, like Jatin said, he was really ahead in the early game because I had a lot of uh, mismanagement of my army, so to say. Like I always seemed to be in the wrong position, and uh, I just lost a lot of units unnecessarily, and you cannot afford that against Aztecs, really. I, I also think I made a small mistake with the like handling the Ancient Raid because I made three units, and Jatin invested into only one. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, I just slowed myself mm -hmm. down yeah. unnecessarily. I think one slinger would have been enough and I could fight the other slinger with villagers or something. It would have been much better. That would, that would have but, but yeah, when I I uh, was between the two cities sieging, I, I was pretty confident that I was going to win the game, but I did a mistake there because I didn't attack the second city. I attacked the third city, which was close to worthless in terms of economy and uh, then jetting got up to h4 which is a huge power spike for Aztecs and yeah even if I can get relatively fast up to h4 I'm not gonna like my chances against Aztecs with Japanese there mm -hmm. but I think I reacted well for the rest of the game like uh, it was really important not to lose a lot of units to Aztecs in h4 and I think I did that pretty well overall and I also raided back a lot. So there was actually a lot of action that went on behind the scenes <laughs> kind of in the game. And I don't blame you guys for missing it because there's a lot of lot to focus on. But yeah, that was a very hectic game overall. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was non-stop raids in pretty much every single game. So there would have been a, a lot of moments that, um, yeah, we would have been missing, for sure. In game number six, I hope I'm getting the numbers right. Um, the next game right was the koreans game um, seventh game number seven yeah game number seven yep yeah come on this is your moment <laughs> this is your moment to shine Jan. <laughs> you've been waiting for this moment tell us tell us everything <laughs> everything oh for the korean game uh momo did that strategy on me a couple of times on stream you guys watch it i don't know if you watched it <laughs> oh okay i haven't I think you've told me about it, but I haven't seen it. But um, yeah. yeah, Momo did that on me a couple of times, and I thought, well, this seems like a very cool strategy. So I had, I think, the most scared I've been is against Indians because Indians, it's a very weird nation, hard to kill them, and I have lost most of my games against Indians too. The only game I lost versus Malaysia was also against Indians. So I had a lot of anti-Indian strategies ready. <laughs> the Americans was one. This Korean was we were, actually, I was expecting Dave to go Indians this game. Yeah. And we were sa saving, we were both saving Indians for a very long time. Yeah, I was, so I was, yeah, so this, this one, I thought this one, Dave will go Indians and this strategy would work against any booming nations. So when he did not go Indians and he was Germans, I was slightly underwhelmed that I won't be exhausting the Indian pick, but well, I, I was sure this would work because the same morning, I practiced with Hockey Star. I let it. I told him <laughs> actually. I told Hockey Star and Red Bull that I'm going to pull a territory victory on you. Yeah. And then, and then I was still able to win. So I realized, like, if I told these guys and I has, still can pull a territory victory, then probably would work on Dave if he's not expecting it. Yeah, and I mean, like you told me though a few weeks back that you were practicing Russian games against Dave. And I think you won a territory victory against him in practice. So no, no, not territory. It was a regular victory. Oh, regular victory. Okay. Yeah, Koreans be are better for territory victory because once you have the timer starting, you can just keep spamming towers and keep repairing. There's nothing your opponent can do. Russians, they can still go back. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so Dave, as that game unfolded, at what point 
did you have like a knot in your stomach where you're like, oh no, this is this is not good? Um, I guess it was around the time I went to H3. Like that's when I realized that this is standard settings, territory victory, the thing. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I just, uh, I don't think this thread is OP per se. I think I didn't handle it well. I, I made a couple of crucial mistakes that let it out of, let it get out of control. The first mistake I did was, uh, I had Germans and I had sugar. I could have gone for civic two in ancient age and there, <clears throat> and then there's no way to do this kind of strategy because if I have the center, then he'd have, have to go around. So that was the first uh, thing that I could have done. The second thing was that uh, I I didn't uh, think about uh, like how to phrase this. I expected Jatin to play this match standard when he had a much worse sieve than me. So it was pretty obvious that he would go for some wacky strategy like a rush or territory victory or something similar. And when it occurred to me, it was already too late because I was setting into this boom into gunpowder age and then timer starts and I have to do Civic 3, Civic 4, Colosseum. Yeah. So yeah, it was really hard to come back after that because I already let it get out of control so much. And then another thing that surprised me was uh, the H4 attack because I expected Jetting to go to H5 since the Minutemen are there for Koreans. But he went for the rush, and uh, I didn't have any army at that point. I was gaming for H5 because I expected the same thing. That was just due to lack of scouting by me, I think. Because if I spotted the sieges earlier, then I could have prepared better. Still, the game was not over yet. I was first to H5, and then I did my final mistake, which was fighting before the upgrades came in. And I lost too much there to really make it like I had like three minutes left to do something and you're not going to kill Koreans in three minutes in H5. Yeah. There's no way. And did you think of, um, in, I guess in hindsight, Temple of Pico as, a, as an option that you could have gone for? Well, it's like 800 resources. Actually, it's even more because you already have one wonder. So it would just put me even more exposed to a rush. So I'm, and I also think that was not necessary. I was not under the threat of uh, territory victory when I had my Colosseum. It was only when I lost that city. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, very good point. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty amazing work. That whole game it was just bizarre. But it was nice to see you guys both thinking on your feet because yeah, it was kind of a unique circumstance that we probably won't see for quite some time again. Uh, certainly not in the grand final. <laughs> so, and then that what was the that was the second last game, right? And then the, mm -hmm. the last game was um, the, the final one we just saw. Which, yeah. Which was? Uh, can you remind me? Sorry, what were the nations again? Uh, India and French. Yeah, Indian versus French. Classic matchup. Yeah, that is. A, yeah, that's a classic matchup, right? Often one v one standard random. Um, comes out quite a bit, I think. So, yeah, what was your what was your thoughts there? Um, I think a lot of people were semi trolling before Jatin, but I think the biggest thing people were mentioning was the the elephants. Was that something that? Yeah, yeah. that no, that's that's actually why I lost. I had the perfect set of that game. I had perfect eco, great rares. I I had a head start. I I was the one started raiding, and everything was perfect for me but then i lost a lot of uh, elephants and that was very good on dave he made sure he didn't let any of my elephants go back and some of my mistakes too i knew my elephants are going to die but i still sent them and that hurt me too much else initially dave's army wasn't too big if i had those elephants alive um i think it would be very easy to finish that up before it goes becomes too big yeah did you have any thoughts dave was it just like um you wanted to kill in age three before it got to gunpowder or you were comfortable going to gunpowder all right so my thought process was the score is four to three i still have indians left 
chatting also as Indians left. And the remaining picks for both of us are kind of middle of the road. So I wanted to avoid an Indians mirror because if I can just have Indians for the last game, Jatin would not have it. And uh, I would have a better chance of going into that game. So oh, that's why I went for French, which I believe is uh, pretty has pretty good chances of killing Indians. Not the favorable in the matchup, but uh, if I play it correctly, then I can win in H3. And J Jatin did some mistakes with the raids. He invested two elephants. I think he got two villagers, but I had wool, so I had easy time replacing them. And yeah, just not saving those elephants was a big deal because they would have helped a lot. Mm -hmm. Also, the fact that uh, he let me have spice, which helped my gold income, so I could make more crossbows. And French with uh, 150 gold income is very deadly. I have a feeling that spice does more than 15%. It gives you a huge boost. There has to be some 30%. <laughs> I'm Everybody not sure. I, I, I even researched taxation to get my... my max gold encounter yeah but that was good stuff i was expecting to win that one and i had another indian killer nation at the end waiting what, what would have been what would you have chosen in game the seven? british yeah, Br british do very well in h3 against indians the archers they pick off the elephants that was my plan for the last one <laughs> unfortunately i couldn't use british and dave can you confirm oh, I don't think that would have worked, but <laughs> I, guess, yeah. I guess we'll never know. Yeah. By the way, guys, I, I wonder what was your kind of your mindset for you? You know, you're about to play the game. What what were you guys feeling in terms of like how how sure were you that you were going to win? For example, let's start with Dave. Um, I was not sure of anything. Like I guess yeah. that I didn't have a lot of preparation. I was solely relying on what I know and what I know works well. I even op opened up my tier list of 1v1 standard nations and I was speculating on what to pick there. Yeah. So I I just uh, went into this match as uh, I'm going to do my best and play standard, see how it goes. Yeah, okay. And you, Jad, were you sure of anything or like... Uh, I was I I just wanted to have a good games. I I I was uh, thinking that at at worst I lose this. I'm still second place. So it's not it's yeah. not too bad for me. And yeah. I was even thinking about a best of eleven because I had so many nations I wanted to try out. <laughs> but <laughs> I think you guys would hate me if we did a best of eleven. <laughs> you have to pay us more money to uh, to cast it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything after Bo9 is premium service. <laughs> uh, and um and dave when when you finally uh, you know finished that last game and you know you won the series did that do you feel like it healed any of the wounds that may have been uh, still there in place from the semi-final loss in nomadian 2 i don't really relate to those two things together if you know what i mean by that like it's a completely different format and Steam tournament, so it's. I wasn't thinking of that at all, and I think I already got past that kind of like I'm not hurt of that result. Yeah, sure. So, so basically, if you but if you did want to go back and I guess you know make amends for what happened in the past, do you, are you saying that you may have to wait for Nomadium 3? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I'd like to mention is uh. What what I really liked about this best of nine was that I think every single game the better player won basically every uh, loss was dictated by bad decisions not yeah. something luck based. Yeah, I agree. Also, I want to give a shout out to Blast because he's the guy sponsoring this tournament. He's the yeah, one yeah. who came up with this idea. Yeah, massive shout out to Blast. Thank you so much, Blast. It's been. It was his uh, idea, I think, two years ago, to um, to get all the best standard players together in one v one. So, yeah, it's been quite the journey, but it's nice to see it all come together and 
normally um, these things are quite hard to put together. And and, I, and obviously, shout out to, I mean, I'm going to pat everyone on the back here, but, you know, all three of you guys that are on this on right now have put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this as well. So you guys should all be very um, proud of, yeah, the, the outcome. And I think often when the, the commentators commentate games and, you know, people will take pot shots and say, oh, these guys don't know what they're talking about. Well, you can say with undoubted proof now um, that you guys obviously made the grand finals here. So uh, you can ban those trolls and then laugh at them because they didn't make, <laughs> they didn't make the grand finals. And um, so, no, it's, it's been awesome, um, obviously, seeing you guys do well. Yeah, we're going to have King of Sara too very soon. And also, Kron, thanks for staying up till 4.30 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. Oof. It's fine, man. I, it's the sacrifice I'm more than happy to make because, <laughs> I mean, yeah, obviously, um, I, I really enjoy casting these games and it's good to, uh, good to get through them. I don't know if I could have waited another week or so. To, uh, to see the outcome so that's no, been great I think, I think i think the viewers were eager to see the result as well yeah it's, the, it's what the people the, were, were demanding when did you guys play by the way was it just earlier today or was it a while back because you couldn't tell us right but like did you, did yeah, you i'll let dave take that one i'm not sure which day it was but we played in two parts this week during the week like first four games and then the last four some other day yeah i think it was uh thursday and friday friday yeah so you guys had to basically sit there for two three days waiting for it to be cast trying not to spoil it <laughs> thinking yeah <laughs> some, some pretty epic games to uh to, to sit on so yeah okay um just quickly um uh, there were a couple of uh, questions from the audience. One of them was, uh, Dave and Jatin, what gaming setup do you guys both use? So what, um, you know, keyboard and mouse for any of those aspiring pro run players out there? Uh, what do they need to uh, be hooked up with to make them play at the elite level? <laughs> <laughs> you need a, a GTI... 2080 at least yeah RTX. yeah that <laughs> like, if you're if you're getting less than a thousand frames then you're not even playing <laughs> your tower scout just doesn't quite work properly so yeah it doesn't yeah. connect yeah. man uh, also you need that huge monitor <laughs> <laughs> to zoom yeah. out all the way no but seriously oh, yeah. guys so what kind of mouse do you use it's just a regular mouse or is it gaming uh mine's a gaming mouse it has like three extra buttons, but in Rise of Nations, I only use one of those. So, I, I mean, you don't really need a so super you, cool mouse for Rise of Nations, I think. You do use if a you have your um, Gather all the damaged units. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mine is, if I press my side button, if I have a unit selected, it selects all the units of the same type. Yeah, but it, it's not always good because sometimes if I have raiding units and I use that option, it all also put, pulls them back. Uh, so yeah, I should I should reconsider. Anyway, and you, Jen? yeah, I got a, I got a the regular Logitech mouse. It has extra buttons, useful. But I I think something if I could recommend to people, a high refresh monitor is actually helps a lot with lookout scouting. Yeah, it's just smooth. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, I need to. I need to invest in one myself. I think. Did you? Um. Do you guys? Do you have a mechanical keyboard, or what's your keyboard setup? Yeah, mine is a mechanical, like a computer keyboard. How about you, Dave? Mm, mine's a very generic one. It's cheap. Like I didn't buy any fancy keyboard, yeah. so. Yeah, nice. No, I think. Um, yeah, it is a game that came out in two thousand. 2003, right? So, <laughs> yeah. The RTX 20, what is it, 2080? Or, um, yeah, all these fancy graphics cards to play a game which came out um, such a long time ago. It's probably over the top, but yeah, you've got to be the best, so why not? Um, oh, and just um, curious, guys, what, who do you guys think, looking back on the tournament, who was the most improved player?
Well, let me open that window. So I'll just talk about the round of 16. In my opinion, if there was a most improved uh, player of the tournament award, I would give it to Dazzles. Mm. Yeah. I, I yeah because I... For me, Dazzles surprised everybody. He surprised me by a big deal. How about you, Dave? Well, it's a tough one. I would have to say Jatin because like one year ago, if we played this set, it wouldn't be this close, I think. He improved so much in the last couple of months and really caught up to the level. So Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, Jatin is really a top, top standard player. Got it. It'll be fun in the random land map setting of King of Sahara. I think oh, we'll man. see some new strategies, a lot of booming, a lot it's of gonna eight, be... seven games. I think it's going to be chaos as well because I don't know. I don't. I, people are in the, people are used to the Sahara meta, so it's mm -hmm. going to be. A, yeah, people are going to start playing random land maps. I guess now in casual games just to get used to it. There's there's a lot of unexplored territory there. Like we don't yeah. know what's good on those maps, so yeah, we don't really know. Interesting. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe the booming nations like China, Korea. Maybe they will get to redeem themselves in those nations in those maps. Who knows? Uh, so speaking of which, should we do a sh official shout out for King of Sahara? So what's yeah, let's do it. Like a, a soft launch almost of the tournament and the registration. So where's mm -hmm. how do, how can people find out more about this? Can you, can you let us all know? So I'm going to put that in the chat right now. That's the uh, link. Yeah, we can we can quickly check out who all have registered so far. So basically, yeah, in case you guys haven't picked up, King of Sahara is going to be a 3v3 uh, random land map standard tournament, which we haven't ever done before. So it's going to be... Um, a I think a breath of fresh air, even though it is King of Sahara, but it won't all be on Sahara this time. It's just the uh, the marketing. We haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> King of almost Sahara. <laughs> King, of, King of everything, which includes Sahara, but is not just Sahara. It doesn't roll off the tongue, but yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so um, yeah, guys, make sure you get keen and um, yeah, just form a team. You don't have to be uh, professional a professional squad of players you just need to have a good attitude and um yeah be willing to have a crack so make sure you get your uh, your buddies from your clan or some uh, random friends on steam together and yeah organize and register a team and uh, yeah, yeah be uh, starting very soon all right guys i think um is there anything else you guys wanted to cover off before we wrap this up and uh, yeah, call an end officially to the tournament? So it's not officially an end because we still have the third place game pending. Yeah. But we we know the first and second places now. Third third place game is going to uh, no doubt Meliodas uh, gave a, a real good uh, a real good um, opposition when he played him. And Momo is great, so. I'm actually looking forward to that one. It's going to be another very exciting match. Is that going to be best of five? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that'd be best of 69. Best oh, of no, 69 dude, games. Yeah. <laughs> and Kron will cast it. Yeah, you, you do it alone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a lot of yeah high performance drugs, I think, if I was to uh, try and stay awake. <laughs> go, go on a bender, you know, like two days, some cocaine and. Yeah, yeah. He'll make it. <laughs> yeah, get Cron Jr. to join you. Uh, <laughs> she'll keep me awake. That's one thing she can do. So, but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that'll be that'll be good. So third place match will be coming up soon. That that's definitely going to be great. I was going to say, I think Melio Meliodas must be a, a candidate too for most improved. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking about him. Yeah, always always a solid player, and he's, he's obviously done really well to reach the uh, semifinals and yeah, potentially come third. So keep an eye out for that, guys. But yeah, other than that, um, any final words, Dave, Jatin? Nope. 
<laughs> I think I'm. Uh, we can get everybody excited for the King of Sahara. I am. I'm looking forward to that. It's like Nomadium, but now for standard. Yeah. I, I hope. I hope actually, if you're inter or even not inter, I hope you consider getting your friends together and joining. The more people, the fun. Yeah. And Kron still has to get a GoFundMe page for that. Yeah, I do need to do that actually. So um, yeah, we'll put up a link, and if anyone's feeling generous, yeah, please donate whatever it may be and that will be uh forming the basis of our prize pool so yeah keep an eye out for that on by the way what are you gonna do with your money day <laughs> yeah so how much did you win how much did, what's the prize pool let us all know because uh it's, so it's 300 bucks in total i see and how much is the first place like 100 bucks maybe i don't know that's pretty good far out that's better than most <laughs> tournaments considering no matter you just got to split it up with your teammates so yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh... It's not bad. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you'll you'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Imagine yeah, all I, the women. All the women. They. Should I find a way? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they will, they yeah. Will put it in the corner of his room with uh, it's, uh, his two stash. hookers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I'm kidding. <laughs> But I think uh, Dave's got all these Heroes of Might and Magic uh, tournament winnings from the last five years. So we'll just go in a little corner pile of, you know, his loot. <laughs> uh, Arash is saying, Kron is heartbroken after hearing the prize pool. I'm ha heartbroken. <laughs> yeah, that, what, that I didn't win myself. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm happy, man. I'm, I'm glad that you guys deserve that awesome prize pool. And I think, is that Blast that donated the entire amount? yeah wow yeah that's incredible incredible generosity right there from blast so thank you blast we didn't even have yep. to do a uh a fundraising pool for this one it was just straight out of blast's uh, uh pocket yeah it's pocket so awesome guys all right well prolays it's been an absolute pleasure casting this with you it's been always. a pleasure <laughs> yes and uh Jatin, well played, some excellent games, and Dave, congratulations on the on the win. That was a, a very good performance all around and very entertaining to cast. So, guys, without further ado, we might call it a a morning, evening, or night wherever you are. <laughs> it's definitely morning here. Um, we'll wrap this up, guys, and uh, thanks again to everyone out there in the Ron universe for tuning in and watching this. Especially special shout out to everyone who watched all five hours of it. You're amazing. Anyone that watched this on YouTube as well, after the fact, hope you enjoyed it and uh, keep your eye out for King of Sahara. Make sure you register and we will talk to you guys again soon. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Thank you. Good guys, guys. See you. Bye-bye. See you all. Bye.